Welcome to Apocalypse, Mr. Manheim. Who are you? Your new lord and master. You may call me Darkseid. The Waco Massacre. The World Trade Center bombing. John Bobbitt getting his dick chopped off. Bill Clinton becomes president of the United States. And here's one more tragedy from 1993. Showcase 93, starring that dumb twink Robin. You're listening to Dark Side's Couch. I'm Mike. Hey, it's James. I'm Shay. Man, the stock market was doing really well. We had was it? relatively few wars. Um, Maybe not in 93, uh, but certainly by, by, by Clinton's second term, things were going really well. There's always a war, James. I said relatively few. Relatively few. Actually, um, you know how they say every election is the most important election in history. I, I, I was researching that, and I listened to a podcast, and you know they kind of like track the roots of that. And they said, uh, was there ever an election where people said it wasn't a particularly important election? And uh, yeah, it was pretty much the 1996 Clinton-Dole election where basically pretty much everyone agreed, yeah, when, this one doesn't matter. This one's fine. Yeah. yeah. So that was the one, the only person that, that this particular podcast could find. That's how I remember concerns. it. <laughs> yeah, the only person this podcast could find that had concerns uh, was Bernie Sanders said that this was this was like the most important election and it'll be the end of the world if we vote wrong. I don't even know who was supporting at that time. The best but, thing um, about that election was uh, Norm MacDonald playing Bob Dole on Saturday Night Live. Fantastic, Bob Dole. We really need to start picking our presidential candidates based on who can do the, the funniest impressions. And that episode, that Halloween episode of The Simpsons, where Clinton and Dole run against each other oh. and the aliens take over. Oh, yeah, don't blame me. I voted for Kodos. Kodos. Yeah. And they exchange long protein strands by holding hands. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Abortions for some, yeah. miniature some. American flags for others. Clinton gets abducted and he goes, Oh, is it noon already? He's like oh. in bed sleeping. <laughs> I didn't want to spend my inauguration nude in a tube or whatever. That's such a funny ass episode, dude. It re- the, yeah. yeah, of course it yeah. is. The Trios of Horrors are fucking. Golden Age of Trios of Horrors. Yeah. Uh-huh. Was that the first? Well, that was... No, uh, no, no. They started no, in the second no. season. So, okay. so the Trios of Horrors are always one year behind the number of seasons of The Simpsons. Ah. So that's always one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that was 1996. Uh, fuck 1996. We're talking about 1993. Oh, right. Right. 1993, dog. It's always Nobody 19... has any enthusiasm for 1993. Uh, it, it's like, I think 1993 Woo. is when I was old enough to realize what year it was. Now you start figuring out how times count, and then you uh-huh. were starting to think about 2000. Like, how does this work? Because we're at the 90s. What happens next? That was a very confusing moment for me. I was born in 83, and I just don't think of... People are like, wow, what do you remember of the 80s? It's like, I didn't think of it as the 80s. Yeah, that's just, you were a little incubational thing. Little little pile of flesh and muck just crawling around. People's walls were a uh, dark, a dark stained wood panel. It was always wall. brown wood panel. Yeah. What the fuck was that? Yeah. McDonald's ashtrays were like this uh, glass brown. Uh, I always think of so Burger gross. King when I think of the Burger brown yeah. ashtrays. There's so much brown in the eighties. People How think it's that, that appealing. People think it's that hyper color, you know. No, that was the new 90s wave, or, new wave eighties yeah. kind of thing. That, that's like revisionist history. Yeah, that was on TV. Yeah, it's just we always remember the each decade based on like the the three most pop culturey things. Yeah, and I'm and telling like, you I'm now, whole... I'm speaking to all the youths out there. The same fucking things happening with low rise jeans right now. It was on TV. That's why it looks like it worked. You look just as dumb. Yeah, low rise jeans. Do yeah, I don't know, yeah. man. Showing off those V's. So like uh, now, I think nowadays. It seems more like the the legend of the '80s than the '80s actually were. Like the music it's, and yeah. the haircuts and the styles. Like it feels way more like 1980. Yeah. Like they created their own 1980s because the kids dug the aesthetic. Yeah, and we always remember the best part of it and assume that things used to be good. But like again, we had Waco bombings. All right, but like what they thought was the '80s. Well, it wasn't like, a Waco well, bombing. This was, this was, this was the '90s. Real. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're right, right. But but the untold disasters. And, we, and we've had a bunch and things. We, yeah, shitty things are still going on. Yeah, that never stopped. Yeah, it never stopped. But we have this revisionist history that. Oh yeah. It, it was a little. It was. It was simpler and it was easier. Like no, it fucking wasn't. It was just yeah. a different mm. kind of horror. I mean, you You're could right. like afford a house then and shit. 
Yeah, back and and if you look back even further, it's like, oh, things were better back then. I go, you oppressed you oppressed other races through yeah. laws. Yeah, it was good for you. <laughs> like, what the fuck like, are you talking about? We, yeah, whose perspective oh, yeah. are we talking about? When you hear people be like, oh yeah, you know, let's go back to the '60s or whatever, and it's like, like no, ah! no, people fought real hard. People yeah. thought people fought real hard, and that real. came back to <laughs> that stupid yeah. hippie said it came back for a while, and now they're all new wave. Yeah. What, by the way, him. Woodstock wasn't even a free festival. By the not way, not at first. Anyone, it became free. It became well. It was uh, people. Well, it became free because everybody crashed the gates. All the hippies crashed the gates and broke in, and they couldn't enforce it anymore. Yeah. But it was intended as a scheme to make a quick buck by a couple of dudes. Yeah. And there were a bunch of bands, including like the Grateful Dead, who refused to play until they got paid. Yeah. And, like there was no piece of who love. was like that. The Led Zeppelin, I think, was like that. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. Well, a lot of people just played, though, these little <sighs> minor stages. And then 30 years later, we got Showcase 93. Actually, it would have been like 25 years later. Yeah, what was Woodstock? 68? Don't worry about it. Yeah, uh, nine, I don't know. I just say. trying to tie the shit back. Just trying to tie the shit back to Showcase 93, which was a request from Old Comics on Twitter. I don't Hi. know what that is. I don't know what Twitter is. I guess it's a knockoff of X or something like that. Mm-hmm. Back then, but, it was uh, Twitter. That shows how old the request is. No fuck. No, that's re- revisionist history. It was always X. And, uh, yeah, sorry it took forever to get to this, but, you know, that's the way the wheel works, and we don't question the wheel around here. If it makes you feel any better, you're pretty much the only reason we're still on Twitter, old comics. What if uh, Twitter and X-Men switch their letters, and, like, so they'll be the Twittermen? Yeah. Yeah. The the uncanny (laughs) Twittermen? I mean, what What if? I don't know. What? What? Then what? I don't know where that goes. <laughs> I don't know. All come you on. did was just switch two words. Come on. I got to come oh, up with I a like whole it. bit. Yeah, I got to do yeah. another bit on top of yeah. that bit. Two when does it no. end? No, it just makes no, no. me want to scream, get me pictures of Twitter, men. Make me <laughs> want to scream. Uh, Showcase 93. So Showcase was a book uh, in the 90s, revived in the 90s anyway, and it would be a, it would be a collection, a grab bag, an anthology of DC Comics characters and stories featuring sort of lesser known characters or up and coming characters, new characters, and newer writers and artists and, and all these up and coming talent. This is where we met, um, oh God, what was his name? Firepower? Firearm? Arm no, guy? No, no, Gunman? No, don't even Remember the dude who no. could turn anything into a gun? <laughs> No. Uh, oh my we, god. Uh, why haven't what? we returned to that guy? Yeah. Because <laughs> we, hate, we hated him. Uh, no, it was in our 200 no. 200 first episodes. That can't be right. It was, what? Uh, why would we was... hate this guy? <laughs> if this, I, yeah, right. revisionist Hang history. On. Showcase 94 issue one. It was either issue one or issue two. Um, we're going to find out because I'm telling you, you guys did not like this guy. Uh, gunfire. If you go back to our 200th episode, The Adventure of Gunfire, uh, the synopsis, Gunfire is exploring the facility he just inherited from his late father, including the experimental weaponry room. Oblivion front forces led by Dominion attack and try to break their way into steal the weapons. You don't remember this guy with the Click face? on the fe- Gunfire featured characters. Yeah, there you go. There's... Yes, I gunfire. do. Yeah, we this guy gunfire. sucked. You're right. <laughs> Like, this is not anybody's favorite character at all. Oh, no. How do you fuck that up? He could turn, he touched anything and it became a gun. I, I, was, I yeah. don't remember this at all. I do. We did hate him. He's right. Okay. Yeah, this guy did suck. What yeah. a letdown. 6 1 and yeah. 190. I'm like, dude, a guy who turns, his name's Gunfire, and everything he touches turns into a gun. It's like, how do you fuck that up? You idiots. Mm, you give him a boring. stupid booster gold costume. Yeah. He had Only the, booster yes. gold can do a booster what gold. What the fuck? He does look a lot like booster gold. Yeah. He should have been yeah. a teenager mad about school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that was the last time we looked at Showcase. Uh-huh. This time, things are going to go better. I know it. Uh, so it came up on the wheel, and we're going to feature three stories with three exciting characters, Robin the Boy Wonder, Blue Devil, and Peacemaker. Peacemaker is an exciting character. Uh, he became an exciting character. He's also Legend. barely in this comic. Thanks to John Cena. Well, he's got one story. Another miracle from John Cena. Well, I would count James Gunn as part of that, considering he wrote and cast it and directed as, it. As a Catholic, I can't wait for them to canonize John Cena for his many miracles. <laughs> a saint, yeah. But he has to be canonized wearing the Peacemaker helmet, uh, or That's his my... his like fruit like his fruity pebbles like wrestling outfit. Fruity Pebbles were wrestling really, off. He really. always wore like really bright colors, and they would oh, always change. Okay. All right, well. So the Rock called him Fruity, fruity Pebbles once. 
Well, we're a ways off from getting to that because first we got to talk about Robin. Yeah, boo. Robin uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and get into this. This cover is kind of bizarre because it's the three mm-hmm. of them standing together and they're three Which separate stories. Which makes you stories. think they're having an adventure no. together and no. they don't. No, it's Jesus. a fucking lie. Yeah. yeah this isn't, well, if you read Showcase, you would know that they're multiple stories. I don't know. Stories. If I picked this up because of the cover, I would have been pissed. Yeah. Well, like, I also wow, know. what adventure are they having? How's Robin <laughs> reconciling Peacemaker's yeah. violence? They're very different guys. And Robin looks like he has his foot up Blue Devil's butt. He sure does. Pretty cool there. Yeah. All right. Well, we can go ahead and get into the... By the way, wait, did anybody catch the uh, the surprise writing credit in one of these yes, books? Yes, okay, I did. Good. We'll get there when we get there. Come on. You know I ain't reading that. Yeah, you're reading no credits box. Fuck that. I did uh, this, a full on. Oh, yay. This first story is starring Robin. It's a book called One Stone, written by the legendary Doug Monch, who we've seen many, many times. He was all over Batman-related books in the 90s. Art by Chicago native Kieran Dwyer and Dick Giordano on X. All right. All right. So this is the end of a Robin story. So we don't know what the fuck was going on. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Uh, Well, I pieced it together because it wasn't hard. (laughs) <laughs> no, it's not it's not the most complex plot. Yeah. Robin's been fighting this dude named Bracuda, mm-hmm. uh, who's a monster. <laughs> Bracuda. His, his name's Bracuda. It's not Barracuda. At I first I thought it was Bar- it. If he was called Barracuda, he would have been awesome. But I would have been playing like, that cool Barracuda song this whole time. He's just like, I want to be called Barracuda. And his buddy's like, guy, you can't call yourself Barracuda. Yeah. What if I Your call myself is... a Bracuda like it's my name? He's like, all right. Well, it's... it is. Ramon Bracuda. Yeah, really? Right, is, really though, is that really his name? Shit. Yeah. Maybe I yeah. misjudged this character. <laughs> Maybe he's pretty cool after all. I mean, he got born with a cool name. So he's a big, he's a crime boss. He's a big dude with a with a dragon uh, covering his chest, a dragon tattoo covering his chest. He's, he's not. Pin, he, he's pink yeah. like a baby mole. Yeah, he's he's got like a little bit of a pinkish uh, pigment. That's not on him. a barracuda on him. That's not oh, what the tattoo I a, was. I think it's a dragon. I think it's a dragon or a sea monster. Oh. Yeah. Um, only the first of many uh, penis-related euphemisms we're going to hear in the course of this book. I've never referred to my penis other as a, than as a my sea di- monster. My, my dick. Oh well, the, you're losing out on a lot of fun. Which I makes it your forties si- makes it sound weak too. Given dick, it, uh, dick. Well, I mean, what's a good? I don't cock. know. I guess I guess cock is okay. Cock, yeah, cock sounds, is the strongest yeah, way yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, can't, you can't say peeny. Don't say no. peeny. Don't teeny, ever say. Because then you're teeny peeny. Yeah, you're teeny Yikes. peeny. You don't want to be that guy. Yikes! Girls will laugh at you after they tell you it's okay. I mean, I hear back in the days of ancient Greece, it was actually uh, sought after to have a small penis because it meant you were more concerned with your mind and intellectual pursuits. But I think it's just what the nerds said. Yeah, someone yeah, with a small penis true. who was in charge made that up. <laughs> As most leaders are. Yeah. You have to have a small penis and want to overcompensate for something who want to be in charge of anything. Who wants to be in charge of things? Scientists are saying that our penises are 25% bigger because we're more promiscuous. How, how does so that... So the more well, you fuck, the bigger it gets? It's basically like uh, when women become more promiscuous and because for, for the longest time we had you know marriage and monogamy, but now people are more open with their sexuality. Because of that, uh, the males have to compete more for mates. Mm-hmm. So they're just naturally growing bigger penises through, you know, uh, you know, selection and just environmental conditions. So is a larger penis more likely to impregnate? Because that would just say that you're you no, know, but you're more like genes. You're more likely to get a woman to have sex with yeah. you. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, I guess you're, you're yeah you're you're getting around more. Mm-hmm. But that that presumes that the woman knows you have a big penis before you have sex. Yeah, well, or everyone has just, phone. Everyone has phones now where they send each other phones, pictures yeah. of their genitals. Or you could just be carrying yourself with that BDE, right? You know, that could yeah, be. Yeah, just gotta wear those sweatpants and let it flop back and forth. Yeah, That's, hence, why you'll never see me in sweatpants. Yeah, you, you gotta stop wearing those uh, tight constricting underwear. Uh, so we open up with this, and yeah. Robin's just taken down Bracuda. This is the Tim Drake Robin, by the way. This was the Robin that I grew up with. The worst one. No, I'm sure he's no. cool. I don't, I'm sure Were he's you going to do he's hashtag right. not my Robin otherwise? <laughs> well, <laughs> Tim Drake, Tim, the thing with Tim Drake is he was a good boy in an era of bad boys. Like Tim Drake was the good kid. I remember reading his solo series and he was, uh, he had a, at the time, because now he's bisexual, but at the time he was a straight boy. Uh, and he had a girlfriend, Ariana, 
like a Romanian hot girlfriend and she wanted to have sex. And he, uh, it was a months long arc of him deciding whether or not he should have sex with this woman before deciding ultimately they should wait until marriage. Ah, Tim. And then they, and then they broke up. He was the good boy. Oh, I wonder why. (laughs) Yes. He was the good boy when everybody else was, you know, they were bad boys, Jason Todd's and things like that. And everybody in the nineties was the punisher. And Tim Drake was the one good boy. She's like, what a wimp. Yeah, well, she was kind of a whiner too. That was a bad relationship, doomed to fail. It sounds I'm like glad he found a boyfriend. When yeah. was she murdered in retribution to hurt him? No, she just. I think she just. They broke up, and I even remember. So I think by the time they broke up, I was old enough to go like nobody really goes away very long in comics. But then I think she really did go away. Yeah. She may never have came back. Yeah, huh. She found someone with the Duke. Yeah, I'm just get yeah. She's probably doing just. She fine. found Dick. She found Dick Grayson. Found Dick Grayson. They don't call he's him Dick like, Grayson for nothing. He's like, I'll fuck you. <laughs> Well, Check out my butt. Like Dick Bigson. Right. I think Dick probably would have been about 22 and she would have been like 15, but okay. Cock, Cock Grayson. Yeah. So um, getting back to this comic book, though. Nah. Uh, Bullock <laughs> is in the opening panel. And really? he He's looks and he looks like he's barely put together. He it looks mm-hmm. like literally his pants are undone. There's food all yeah. over him. His shirt is yeah. untucked. There's yeah. stuff on his tie. Yeah. Like. That's how he was. What the mm-hmm. fuck? No, yeah. that's how he was always portrayed. They cleaned him up a bit for the animated series. But no, I get, who... I get that. I get he was always messy and stuff, but this is extreme. It, his pants are literally undone. Yeah, he's a drunk. <laughs> he's a he's a semi-corrupt, drunken monster. Yeah, but he gets results. He does. He really does. And uh, so speaking of results, Robin has beaten Bracuda, but he's collapsed in Gordon's arms as a result. All he had mm-hmm. in him. And, Gordon's holding Robin, thinking, wow, this kid is chiseled. Yeah, Look but he like, starts stroking his head. He goes, you'll be all right, my little baby bird. So I guess uh, Robin has been trying to catch Bracuda for a while. Batman is out of town, which was a weird... We'll get to that when we get to that scene. But if I had not read thousands of comics, uh, Batman comics in the 90s, I would have a very hard time figuring out the chronology of this thing. Ba- yeah. Batman traveled to another state because he got catfished. Well, the thing you have to remember is that this... Yes, <laughs> he was going to meet his... His hot Romanian girlfriend showed up at the yeah, airport with the flowers. Oh she no! She just doesn't show up. Yeah, uh, his Ariadne or whatever you call her. Like I paid, I paid her grandma's rent. Oh no! Don't do that. Uh, no, this was actually right before, as in like I think weeks before the uh, not the climax, but the midpoint of the Nightfall arc where Bruce had his back broken by Bane. Oh, so in in the comics at this point. Batman, he, sh- he certainly ain't leaving town for a week. That's for damn sure. Uh, he had pneumonia. He was worn down. He was stubbly all the time. So when he has a cameo in this in this story, it doesn't make any sense because he's just out of town having a good time. So, mm-hmm. you know, but anyway, uh, so anyway, so they bring Robin to the police station because if they take him to the hospital, they're going to take off his mask. So Gordon's protecting him by bringing him to the police station and they see that uh, Bracuda is going to just be able to walk free. He's just going to mm-hmm. get to go. Of course. Right. Yeah, well, he had uh, he had the Supreme Court change the laws, so now he has immunity for any official acts performed while in his position as a crime lord. Yeah, they so could have just arrested okay. Robin for assault. Yeah, actually, yeah, they do make that comment that, like, dude, he could press charges against you, you know, because you had right. no proof that he did anything, even though we all know he's a, he's a crime lord, but we've got no proof of it, and all we have is proof that you assaulted him, so he could right. charge you. He should arrest and Robin And he burned off his hair or something? Yeah, he burned his hair off. Oh, wow, Robin. <laughs> he got savage. He's got the dog in him. Hey, you know, this is our second book in a row about a bird guy. Yeah, we had uh, Nighthawk last time. Worked out super, super well. Nighthawk from 1995 or something like that. So it was a it was a good decade for extreme birds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we see a little flashback to the fight, and we see that Bracuda fights in little, little diapers, little panties. Mm-hmm. As one good. does. As one, well, you know, he's a tough guy, you know, a lot of self-confidence. And Gordon explains to him, yeah, this is not going to work out. We can't hold him. Uh, he's just going to go free and, and fuck you. And so right in front of the police, uh, the police headquarters, Bracuda tells this guy, yeah, I need you to kill that Robin kid. And I don't care who knows it. And he's like, right now? He goes, yeah, right now. He goes, but I'll go to jail. Like, did, uh, yeah, Bracuda is terrifying, by the way. Let's be very clear here. You're going to do what this guy says. I'm not going to work for this guy. I'm going to leave. Well, if you're already his employee, you're fucked. Like, you no, I'm out. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave right here count. and now. I'm like, I'm not killing someone in front of a police station. Yeah. <laughs> killing like, a what? child in front of a you police station. You want me to station. do that right here, right now? Like, I'll go to prison for the rest of my life. 
they're too afraid to go against Bakuda. They'd rather Dude, go to jail. I ain't that afraid. I'm running. Yeah, this is why. If you're going to get involved in... If you're going to be a goon, uh, not that kind of goon, but if you're going to be a, not a sexual goon, uh, if you're going to be that kind of a goon in Gotham, you want to get involved with like a low-level villain because the higher ones are going to ask you to do some crazy shit. You know, he should just pull... If he has a gun, he should just pull it out and shoot Bracuda right away. Well, he has no... Then that would be murder, uh, you know... Uh, yeah, it's Bracuda. He can run off. But, but, uh, it'll be fine. Like, you know, waiting for Robin to get out, like that's going to be have some attention. But if he just does it right here, right now, while no one's around... Oh, actually, there's a cop right behind yeah, him. Yeah, there's a cop getting with oh, his wow. donuts. Oh, wow. Yeah, I would just yeah get my car and leave town. Just leave. Just just get out of here. Well, this is... Pull my kids out of leave. school. You shouldn't have gotten in with Bracuda. I would have turned right around and gone into the police station and been like, I would like uh, protective immunity, immunity yeah. protective custody, yeah. please. Yeah. I would like to rat on Bracuda. I'm sure Robin here would like to hear what I have to say. Yeah, I'd like to talk to Robin. Sorry about all that problems. Oh, hey, like I, he wants me had. to. He wants me to kill you. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, <laughs> you're a child. You're in high school, bro. Robin's like, thanks. Like, yeah, this would make it way easier. You could have done this before I got my shit fucked up by Bracuda earlier. But... Like, yeah, no, pr- no problem, dude. I mean, this <laughs> this has gotten out of hand, don't you this think? Is... He goes, yeah, a little bit. Look how I'm dressed. He goes, right, <laughs> right. This whole crime thing in Gotham. I know this is Gotham, but God damn, let's Jeez. have some civility. Right? So, uh, yeah, Rob, none of that happens. Uh, <laughs> instead, he just agrees to do this. So Robin meets with Gordon, and they, they discuss why Bracuda is able to walk free, which is because they had no evidence. And uh, Gordon snaps a pencil because he's mad because he hasn't been able to catch Bracuda either. Mm-mm. This guy we've never heard of before who is the You know, he wouldn't be Gotham. personally mm-hmm. catching bad guys. He's the police commissioner. He's mostly going to be doing administration. Yeah, but he shows up on the scene a lot. Yeah, he does, but he yeah. wouldn't. But yeah, you really, you really shouldn't. His place is back in the station filling out paperwork no. and making well, that's calls. Well, that's what he does in the Adam West Batman show. He never leaves his office. The best portrayal of Commissioner Gordon. You know, he was... never goes on site. Yes. Why would he? He just immediately calls Batman for every inconvenience. All right. Oh, does he show up? I guess uh, I don't know. On this one, in this story? No, I mean in the Batman A nine. Oh. In the Batman. Uh, 60, I don't think he ever gets show. an action. No. Do, I mean, I does he, he ever only... like show up to like? Oh, we caught this guy. And he I think he does that. Yeah. Personally, I mean, even still, why would he do that? Take yeah, credit, just bored I guess. Something to do. So he can get reelected or whatever. Well, he, he wants become to commissioner. see all. The, he wants to see all these freakish villains. I want to see that stuff. Look at that freak O'Hara. You know, Harris sounds to... <laughs> racistly makes comments about yes. how they look. People move to Gotham just to see the freak villains. I guess that's so, true for Chicago as I, well. I could yeah. believe that. Yeah. 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 Of course. You got you have fans of all these different villains. You got Two Face stands. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. Freak tourism. Yeah. I'm going to see Two Face. I'm going to see Killer Croc one of these days. Also, I, I do note that this is an, an unofficial Batman appearance, so I get to hashtag the shit out of Batman for this you episode. You do, and it, it won't, it won't be a lie. Yeah, it won't be a lie. Thank should, you, old comics. You should just do it anyway. Yeah, for just all, always for tag all Batman. Yeah, always like all tag those, Batman. Have you seen those AI posts that, uh, regardless of what they're posting, they always hashtag Scarlett Johansson for some reason? <laughs> That's smart. I have not. Yeah. They're That's just, smart, they're, dude. Weird AI abominations always hashtag Scarlett Johansson. Shay, are you not looking up things about Scarlett Johansson? Not usually, no. Yeah, it's always some thirsty Hungarian guys who are like just hitting on images they saw in Facebook comments. You know, like uh, America has been working towards like getting rid of that kind of activity, you know, being like a hyper horny man, you know, so yeah. we're, try- we're trying to, but uh, it seems like the other countries, they, they're going the opposite direction. And embracing it. Are we are we really getting rid of horny men in America? I don't know. I about just that. mean like being like creeps. Like we've shamed the creeps. Enough oh yeah, you're not it, supposed to be a creep, yeah, but yeah, yeah. we but still seems, do it. It seems like everywhere else, like being a creep is still okay. Yeah, it's different cultures. You know, I don't know who are we to judge. Uh, not me. Yeah. So anyway, so Robin's swinging through the city, and this dude uh, who was hired to to kill Robin is like, "How oh, this is a this is." Yeah, out of hand for sure. What am I gonna do? Oh wait, there's Robin right now. I'll shoot him. Yeah, right Robin. He thinks he's, Robin's gonna walk out the front door, and then while he's looking around, he sees that Robin's swinging across the city on his bat rope, mm-hmm. and he thinks to himself, "I'm just gonna shoot the rope." Yeah, we, and he hits the rope, which and is he crazy. Hits, <laughs> even he's just like, "Wow, I'm a crack shot." Holy I, shit! Oh my goodness. So he hits Robin. He uh, Robin's rope. He snaps the rope. Robin starts falling and. He comes up with a, a truly ludicrous solution here. He takes the bit of his rope that's left in his hand, 
and he lassoes a clothesline. No, without a weight on the end of it, it's not going to lasso shit. It's not going to do anything. What is this? This is crazy. I don't know. The guy who wrote this doesn't know anything about anything. It, well, it's Doug Munch, and he's a legend, and he knows a lot about things, but this is uh, probably not about this. Yeah, so take it the fuck back. Not about this. He gave us the Inhumans. Well, he wrote, he wrote those Inhumans books we read that we enjoyed very much. Oh, I'm just saying. Uh, so yeah, but Robin, uh, man, just somehow snag this, uh, clothesline smacks against the wall of a apartment building falls. By the way, did anyone ever really hang their clotheslines between buildings like this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a real thing. Uh huh. People still you do it. Have an agreement with the other building. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. You're just going to hang your dirty underwear. Dude, dude, you, you don't see that around the city? No, I've never seen that between no, two buildings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the whole thing. Really? People do that? I mean, now it's mostly just people doing it on their own. But yeah, sometimes you'll see where they're connected. But people are hanging out their laundry in the city, yeah. People just don't have dryers, huh? No. You're not supposed to use their dryer all the time. Certain fabrics don't like it. Well, you can. that's why you put it on no heat. Yeah, but well, you know what I'm no saying. Heat. I don't know, man. That's I, I guess. I guess that's what's going on. People are hanging their shitty, shit-stained underwear out on the... I wouldn't want to like line. put my clothes Your that delicates. I just washed outside to dry, especially with all the pollution in the city. Really? You know, I yeah, don't know why. I would, anyone, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't want that. You're just going to stink like the city. Yeah, you're just going to get nothing but cicadas coming back. Right. Get all up in your orifices. Yeah. Uh, try to keep the cicadas out of the orifices. Uh, so he lands in a trash can, and the dude who shot him. Thinks not to investigate any of this. He's just no. going to go back to Barcuda, tell him everything's fine. Well, he did of. fire a gun. Uh, he, he, fu- needs to, he needs to leave before the police arrive. In, that's fair, too. But also, in fairness, he did have the most amazing shot I've ever seen. And he, right. yeah, he, sh- he, he definitely should have pushed his luck if he was going to kill this boy. <laughs> I, I kind of understand why you just said, you know what? Good enough and left town. Well, I can't imagine scene. that Robin would use you know, acrobatics to survive the fall. Do people know that Robin's acrobatic? I bet they do. They don't know, know anything that. about these violent vigilantes. All they know is that mm. their arm is broken. A lot of rumors, yeah. So uh, this dude goes back to see Bracuda and tell him everything's taken care of. Bracuda, Bracuda wearing a, a pink robe, by the way. Very mm-hmm. secure in his manliness. In a pink I'm, home. Yeah. These, uh, com- these superhero books use the Kingpin model a lot. Uh, oh, yeah, the the big... Yeah, big crime Giant, boss yeah. who can physically intimidate the hero instead of just like get arrested. Well, I mean that is a benefit. Like you're into, as a as the big physically imposing guy, you're going to have a a presence amongst the criminal community, right? You're going to earn yeah. respect that way, aren't you? Well, I don't know. I think it's just like real life where muscle is muscle. Yeah. Well, he's also filed his teeth. Hey, so he that's like what I'm going to do when uh, the market Hell crashes. Yeah. Like a barracuda. Yeah, I'm gonna file my teeth and like a take over take over a gas station. Yes, that's gonna be your domain. A couple of gas fires on the corner there. Yeah, yeah, just to set the barrier. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be Man. very Road Warrior. I can't. Yeah, wait. Dude, I loved those movies as a kid. I've been waiting because that's yeah. the obvious outcome, right? It's like, the end. Yeah, it's the end point of civilization. For like sure. if we were gonna do like the Star Trek Society, that would have happened, no, and no, it didn't, no, no, and no. it's not gonna happen now. We still don't have flying cars. That's happening now. uh, I think the fins or something might figure it out, but we're not going to figure it out. No, dude, we're going to have water wars. The water wars are coming. I think Scandinavia is planning to blast off of this planet any second. Hell yeah. Yeah, right. They're, they're the they're the Nordic aliens, and, and that's what you want, honestly. That's the, that's the part of the civilization you want to continue is the, the beautiful Nordic know. people. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want beautiful. them to continue on. Everyone's beautiful. I need to pull up my twenty three and me and see if I have any Nordic in me. Uh, I think I, I do. I've heard that. Did you want any? Uh-huh. <laughs> I always use that joke and it never works. Yeah, <laughs> never makes any sense. Um, I've heard that if you have any Irish heritage whatsoever, you can automatically apply for Irish citizenship. Uh, I have so, Irish heritage. I would so. imagine you do. So. so maybe, I don't know. Let's go to Dublin. Yeah. Maybe they'll like <laughs> the show. I have be- Irish. Maybe they'll like the show better there. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's our enclave. It's Mike, the- you, and you, you, you want to leave with me? To Ireland? Sure, let's go. Yeah, we both got Irish. Well, fuck, right. I want to go to Ireland. I'm the James Joyce You can marry fan. me. Oh, yeah. You know, that's, that's probably gay marriage is probably legal in Ireland, right? I don't know. Probably. Let's find out. Right, we don't have to it be gay to gay get married to a man. Marriage legal in Ireland. Yeah, I mean, they're very I mean, Catholic. You can marry whoever you want. 
Oh, yeah, since 2015. Hell yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be gay to get married to another oh, man. Oh, shit! You know? Became the first country in the world to legalize same-sex marriage through a popular referendum. Like, only sexism, 62%, though. Sex isn't all that a relationship is, right? No. Like, most of it's like companionship and partnership. You don't need to be romantically involved with people to get married. You most get married of it's... All, yeah. You get married for all kinds of reasons. Most of it's grocery shopping. Yeah, you Running found errands, someone you vibe yeah. with. Yeah. Get married so that you can have the benefits of marriage. Maybe we should normalize that. Like, you married your best friend. Yeah. And there's nothing, you're not having Completely sex. Completely platonic. Yeah. Yeah, just platonic. But you can marry, you marry the person you love the most, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, like, who's, why do we have to ha have it attached to this sexual necessity? I, mean, I, I assume if you do that, then people are going to start marrying their brothers and sisters and parents, which I guess. Okay. Well, you know, so when you have family, though, a lot of the same protections you'd get under marriage you already have with your relatives. Yeah. So now you're doubly protected. <laughs> like, Double bonded. You can't do shit to me. You know? I don't know. If you if like if sex wasn't expected mm -hmm. uh, of you, would you be more be. inclined to marry the person you're sleeping with or your <sighs> best friend who you trust? Yeah. I mean, it it certainly would be easier. Like that's your partner. Like you yeah. like you know like. Not my 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 pump couch. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Because I, I can do that sometimes. I guess I can hit the wet noise sometimes. Once I, in a I'm, while. I'm so off track. I got high. Yeah, yeah. We got to get back to this. <laughs> Let's get back to this. All right. Uh, anyway, so the dude tells Barcuda, yeah, everything's for sure taken care of. And Barcuda says, you checked the body, right? B Barcuda's just like, well, you got the hell out of there as soon as you fired your gun, right? <laughs> yes, you, you shot. He goes, yeah, dude. You, you made well, good. Sure. The police were on their way. <laughs> you made sure to fire one and only one shot and then left immediately, correct? Right. That is yes. the right thing to do. Like, you probably killed him. But, you That's... know, how about this? We just take care of measures in case he survived, right? Like, yeah. you did the right thing, leaving immediately. Yeah. I don't want my employees endangered. He's right. a good boss. Like, what if, like, he gets, like, I'd be more concerned of, oh, shit, my, the guy who works for me just got arrested for killing Robin. Right. The well, guy I just had a problem with. We've seen Bracuda instills a lot of loyalty in his men. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Yeah, so, Bracuda lives in a pink house uh, mm -hmm. with a wooden door. A pink phone, and, uh, and a pink chair. Apparently lives out in the woods, I guess. I, I don't he's know. He's got like a playing card motif. Yeah, he's got kind of nice checked floors and everything. It's cool. It's a, it's a nice place. What, but, if it's uh, a, like, what if it's a refit Checkers restaurant? Uh, Checkers, I think it's a regional thing. I don't know if Are everybody knows about what I'm talking about. I don't it's think they do. Is, ah, is that just like a Chicago thing? Checkers? I don't think it's Chicago, but I think it might be Midwest. Oh, my goodness. It's uh, sorry. It, Checkers is also called Rallies. Oh, I'm Rally. sorry, everybody. Like how sorry. Hardee's and Carl's Jr. Juniors yeah, are like yeah, the same yeah. thing. Yeah. We so, about that last week. so if you don't have a checkers, you might have a rallies. Yeah. In Michigan, it was rallies, actually, now that I think about it. So anyway, uh, so Robin throws his R, you know, his, his like razor sharp R logo at the front door to let not Larry aerodynamic know he's alive. at all. No, not a good not a good idea. I'm not really sure why he thought that was the thing to do. But comic book physics, man. Yeah. A freaking R. I like how the guy. Arr. I like how he has like a hobbit house door on this fancy house, though. Yeah, I, I love this house. This guy's great. He's going to have a long publishing history. Ahead of hey, him. they can't seem to find any evidence on him. Clearly, like maybe they're wrong. This guy. Yeah. What, maybe he's not a crime lord. We don't know. And here's Robin uh, t listening to the phone by hanging out on the power line. Like an actual really, Robin. Really fucking visible. Yeah. Well, he's got his cape covering him. It's dark outside. Dude, you know? everyone would, like, anyone in that neighborhood would immediately call the city. Be like, there's a guy hanging out on one of the power lines. Well, it's funny because in theory, you know, at any given time, Batman has the most advantage, uh, advanced technology. And then you look back at it just a couple decades later, and it's like, dude, all he would have to do is point his cell phone at the tower and, and get the, yeah. you know, and intercept the signal. Like, what are you, what are you doing here? Why well, is he perched on a telephone pole? And, uh, Tim keeps making dumbass moves, though, because essentially he beats up the CUDA and gets told, dude, you didn't actually like let him do anything to instigate this. So you're in trouble here. And he's like, okay, fine. I'll catch him. And then he illegally wiretaps him. And it's like, I've got him now. And Gordon yes. again has to say, you fucked up again. Well, yeah. but this well, you is think part, of a, part of a larger plan. Cause he's saying like, well, if I can intimidate Bracuda or trick him into actually making a very public attempt on my life, then you've got evidence. 
Although I don't know if that would count either because Robin is not a known entity. Like we no, don't know. No, he's a it's a disguise. Yeah. So yeah, I don't in know order if that for would him to, in order for him to press charges, he'd have to reveal his identity. Yeah. So uh, he, Robin calls Burkuda and uh, says like, "Hey man, listen, I fucked up. Batman's gonna be really pissed at me. So how about this? I found some evidence. One of your guys left behind a bunch of paperwork uh, that has your information on there. I will give you that back if you will call off the hit on me. All right." And Bracuda says, that's actually not a terrible deal. I don't really care what happens to you. And Tim draws a little cartoon of Homer Simpson. Yeah, he like, that says Bracuda sucks. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And he says, well, what, eight ball? Something about Nirvana? Third base, something. We'll see this again. But yeah, yeah it looks he, like the, the, the corners of my notes. It school. looks like the Red Hot Chili Peppers logo slightly. Oh, yeah. yeah a little bit asterisk. I'd, I'd, I'd have the M from Metallica drawn. Yeah, and that cool S. <laughs> Remember I drew that S? What was that S? Yeah. From? Nobody, no, I looked it up. Nobody knows. <laughs> What's up with that S? It came from the same place as the uh, Marilyn Manser, Manson rumor came from. Yeah, it's yeah, just, it was ribs. just. Turns out his, what he was doing was way worse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wish he was just removing ribs. <laughs> yeah. Could auction those off. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So they agree. Can create, they, a, can, can, can create a wife for himself. They agree. Yes. <laughs> well, he's a good Christian boy. Yes. Uh, so they agree to this this trade, and then Robin thinks to call Bruce and say, hey, was this a dumb idea? And Bruce is just like, bro, I'm so high right now. Yes. So again, this is at a time where Batman is at the end of his rope, about literally like in, in our time, weeks away from having his back snapped, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but for whatever so, reason. Sick. <laughs> yeah. But they, they, they've set this, I guess, before the events of Nightfall, I guess guess although that doesn't quite gel with other things but whatever and bruce is doing just fine he's somewhere just hanging out supposedly on a mission he's got his tiny laptop like he has cute little laptop that he's that he's using and uh tim calls him for advice and and bruce goes yeah you know what i think you'll be fine just 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 do it i got things to do like, he really kind of blows he, him off he's like i don't care it hangs up <laughs> like, i can show what you do he leaves his text on red yeah yeah it really felt like that well, he does, at the end, he does have a pensive look, and we find mm. out later what that pensive look means, you know? Because he's thinking, like, this colostomy bag is really uncomfortable. <laughs> well, oh, wait, this he, is before you guys back This broken. is before, oh, okay. the timing is really weird, because, yeah, at this point, he definitely wouldn't be leaving down. So, then we flash over to Gordon. Do you love that DC Comics, like, broke Batman's back and then chickened out and brought him back? Well, I mean, that was always a, it's not chickened out, there was never any intention of leaving him paralyzed forever. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, come on. Not paralyzed, but like, even if he recovers, you're not being Batman anymore. No, well, that's true. But what are you going to do? Well, of course, they weren't going to not have Bruce Wayne ever again. Yeah, they could have. They could have. Although at this time, Tim Drake's dad is either paralyzed as well or is just starting physical therapy. So he was a mess, too. It's contagious. And Barbara Gordon in a wheelchair. Like, this was this was a. It's almost like you shouldn't. Yeah, you shouldn't be a normal dude superhero in. Hey, Tim Drake's dad didn't do shit. He just got like, got... right. It could happen even when you're not superheroing, and here yeah, it's, it's happening to yeah. everybody when they're superheroing. It's pretty yeah. much if you're in Batman's orbit, be yeah, prepared the fuck to out die there, bro. or be paralyzed. 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 Gotham. Yeah, paralyzed is a Black Sabbath <laughs> song. <laughs> it's my favorite. So uh, Gordon's uh, hanging out, figuring out what he's going to do. Bullet comes in eating what is I uh, presume is supposed to be a hot dog. It looks like a, a chili dog. dog? It looks like a dog chili turd dog. on a bun. <laughs> yes. I think it's a, I think he's sucking on a chili dog. <laughs> he's eating it on a dare. Somebody yeah, right. put a dog turd that's on why, a bun. That's why Commissioner Gordon's face looks like that in the left panel. <laughs> Dude. Ah oh, Is that a dog shit? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> He'll eat anything if he's there to do it, sure. Uh he's the Whoa, I'm hungry. Clown. That's a dog shit. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> they offered him 20 bucks if he'd eat this dog shit. He's like, no, and it's he not. Said, you don't even you know. look like an idiot. Look at how one of his eyes is wandering. You don't yeah. know what's going on. Well, yeah, he's got sepsis. He's got all kinds of problems. Dude. Yeah, one of his feet is get, is turning a dark color. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to amputate that. That's he's got gout go. and diabetes. No, he yeah. definitely has diabetes. Oh, God, yeah. Bullock, yeah. For, the, for his eating and drinking habits, like he 100% has diabetes. <laughs> Bullock is like 32 years old. <laughs> That's what 32-year-olds look like back then, dude. <laughs> it did. I saw Cheers. I know. Dude, people look uh, old as fuck. And I guess it's coming back around. Mess. Our generation stayed young longer, but I guess the Gen Zs are looking way older way fast. I don't know about that. Why would they? That's what I heard. They ain't smoking. 
Ain't stress. Drinking. Maybe we had easier lives than they did. That could be. Yeah, they are pretty stressed out. Keeping the riz up. It's Isn't hard. it crazy that when I think back on all the bullshit I had to put up with, I'm like, oh yeah, they have. We I had an easier life than the generation that came mm. after me. We've had easier life than just about every human being that's ever existed. Did we have the best ever? Like the millennials? Did we have the the culmination well, of humanity and now it's over? I, I, I can't narrow it down that specifically, but like historians and guys like Steven Pinker will say, yeah, this was the gr- this so far is the greatest time to be alive. As hard as that is to believe, this is it. Yeah, and but now it's going away. It's unsustainable. I, I could be, I don't know. We'll find out. I, I plan to witness the whole thing from your uh, gas station castle refuge. I was watching the the quote unquote debates yeah. on Trap Cam Zero's Twitch channel, and I gotta say, like that didn't seem real to me. It seemed like it was artificial intelligence. There was no audience because okay. they were too complicated to render. You know, the questions didn't make any sense, and the answers didn't make any sense. The answers did not line up with the questions. That's like that's nothing. True. It's not just it didn't line up. Everything mm-hmm. they said didn't make any sense. Yeah. Like it was just a bunch of rambling from both of them. It was. I don't, it didn't. It, it seemed was like very it, incoherent. Yeah. It seemed like AI art, just like word salad. I mean, I think we're we're becoming conditioned to think that everything looks like AI. So I wouldn't agree with that, but I would agree that it felt that way. Dude, it was like pretty disturbing. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty No bad. audience? What why that? Why because, no audience? Because because Trump will get the audience whipped up and 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 that'll make him look better and Biden can't handle an audience. Dude, none of it. Uh, they're both so yeah. incoherent and old. Yeah. It was just rambling nonsense. What are we going to do? Like I normally the one who's the most cynical yeah. on the show when it comes to shit like this. And I was like, "Haha, we'll watch it burn." It's like this is fucked up. Like these, yeah, <laughs> these it's are scary when it actually president. starts to happen. Although I, I always go back to a, a, a line that Lewis Black said in a special like twenty years ago. He said, "We've done tremendously well for a civilization that has no leadership." Like <laughs> yeah. when you consider the fa- and I, it's a joke, but it's also kind of serious. Like, dude, when you consider the fact that really we're kind of out here in the woods on our own, and we have been for many, many years. We're doing okay. I mean, you can't tell people what to do. That's fascism. So people, yeah. you know, mostly just do whatever they want. Yeah. For good or ill. Yeah. All right. All right. Anyway, speaking of doing whatever you want, somebody's gone ahead and turned on the bat signal and it wasn't Gordon. So Gordon's mm-hmm. pissed because he, he reserves that right for himself. And he never goes home. <laughs> he lives. Actually, this was a... This Commissioner was Gordon, he would work nine to five. He would this, be home with his family. This was around the time where he, I think it's slightly before uh, he got divorced. So things were definitely falling Well, I wonder apart. why. Exa- exactly. And he was like living on the couch and stuff. So, if yeah, I was of course. Commissioner Gordon, I would be so mad at Batman. I'm well... Like, you know, you know, being associated with you cost me my marriage. I don't know that it's Batman's fault. I think it's the shithole of Gotham. Yeah, the- but if Batman didn't start his war on crime, he'd probably have a lot less paperwork. You know, if you just let Bracuda run this city, it would probably be a lot smoother and a lot cleaner. Mm-hmm. Everybody goes home at five o'clock on the dot, no exceptions. You just uh, described fascism, James. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We should have a couple of fascist cities, see how they work out. And then Why did James Gordon it. get divorced? For I not being it, at fucking I, home. I, I don't recall, but yeah, it probably was along the lines of, listen, you work 17 hours a day, seven days a week. You're you're in bed with all these psychopaths and murderers. Like it's just it's not a good environment. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, he goes up to the roof, and who's turned on the bat signal? None other than Batman. Yep. All right. He's he's faking his trip all along. Well, here's the thing. This is this is Jean Paul. And oh, it is. It is, but it's kind of tough to read between the lines. And how is the John Paul? How is the John Paul if Batman hasn't had his back broken yet? Well, bec- and this is why the timeline is really tricky. But they definitely were trying to soften people up to the. No, every, every, no this no. is Bruce Wayne. It yeah. is absolutely not. It is. Both you guys are wrong. No, I'm not. You are absolutely not wrong. In fact, we see Jean Paul in the Batman costume in the final panel of this no, story. No, that's Bruce Wayne in a no, way. No, it's not. Yes, it all is. Right, He's dressed. Right, right. Okay, Mike, we'll we're get, on we'll the same page. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. How are you guys fucking with it? it I was reading these books as they came out. They were putting just, John Paul. A, John we'll, Paul occasionally was Batman when Batman was out will, of town. We will get it. We will. You are totally oh, wrong you, about this. We'll get to it, and you might be right. How about that? Uh, we'll get to it, and I'm definitely right. Well, we'll so, see. Jean-Paul Batman, who, before Batman's back was broken, would occasionally stand in for Batman. Really? Why? 
Because he's got because Batman would leave town for a fucking week. <laughs> so he wasn't officially standing in. He's just kind of making an appearance here. We think Batman, that Gord, Gordon would get his voice. But but Tim called Bruce. Tim called Bruce. Yeah, and but then Bruce, Bruce was on a trip in a hotel somewhere far away. So then supposedly. Bruce called Azrael and was like, "Yo, dog." Yes. Yes. Go check that, in on my son. That was Azrael's role. In fact, as you know, this was only like a few hours later. So Bruce somehow abandoned everything he was doing, flew oh, halfway across the world, okay. dressed up as Batman for five fucking seconds. So and then I flew thought back. that uh, I thought that Bruce Wayne was still in Gotham City, and this was a test no. for Tim Drake, and he was no. monitoring the situation. No, he truly did. Did they just say where he down. was? No, they don't, or at least I couldn't find it. I was yeah. I was see, that's why. I, I th- yeah. I th- so he I might be. That. Yeah, we'll get to it. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It's, so Batman, whoever, Bruce Wayne or uh-huh. Jean-Paul Valley. Jean-Paul. M- probably 70% Jean-Paul Valley. Like, we'll, we'll see. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And he's talking so, to Gordon, and Gordon's like, why do you sound different? Yeah, exactly. You would think Gordon would catch that, but again. Like, why is the bottom half of your face not the same? <laughs> this was a different, you know, it was a different time. Things were a little easier. It was this is where he admits he, he knows who, who he's Bruce Wayne because, of course, he would know. He well, and, like, and eh, you know Wayne. what? And that is, but that was a thing around this time where Gordon kind of alluded to the fact that, yeah, I know something's going on. I, I know it's not always the same guy. I know, but I just have to maintain plausible deniability. So I mean, if it's not always knows. the same guy, though, he could be like, who am I dealing with here? <laughs> he's got to play the game. Look, they're in a weird situation. They're, yeah, they they're getting by the best they can. I would take my family out of Gotham City and use my resume as commissioner of Gotham to get a cushy job somewhere in some town. Yeah. Well, do you want the commissioner of Gotham? Because you're like, oh, somebody from Gotham, he's probably corrupt. I don't want or that it's guy. Like, it's like, wow, the commissioner of, of Gotham, who, the uh, guys who arrested the Joker, yeah, you can defend yeah. my small Couldn't. town of 5,000 people or whatever. Couldn't keep him in jail, but yeah, they did arrest him. They did attempt to. So... Gordon, uh, a Batman says, all right, well, here's the thing. I want, I don't want to ruin Robin's confidence, but I, I want to be there. I want to have somebody there. So just, I, I'm going to be around, but nobody's going to know, but you Gordon, I'm going to be hanging out there. Okay. Gordon's like, all right, well, I guess whatever. And so well, I could midnight be home right now, this could have been a text. <laughs> I could be back saving my marriage. They didn't have text message in 1993. No, you had to didn't. go meet somebody. No. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> Terrible. So midnight rolls around and they meet on a spooky bridge. And Bracuda's like, all right, where's the paperwork? And 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 uh Tim Drake just sends him a paper airplane with his scribbles on there with Homer Simpson on there. It's fun. <laughs> and so he's like, Yeah, I fucking lied. So why don't you try and kill me right in front of all these uh witnesses who aren't here? So I really mm-hmm. don't know what witness they you know, what what recourse they have to say that this was a public act they don't really have witnesses but i guess the cops are there but the cops are corrupt so uh, i don't know man so uh yeah robin realizes that this time the fight will go better if he just beats him up with a pole that was his role that was his uh weapon was the pole yeah Yeah, you think batman would have a weapon batman's got a a ton of weapons yeah but i mean like a big old pole would be a bat pole pretty good yeah a pole is a pretty good weapon donatello the ninja turtle knew that Look how much distance uh, Robin's getting. Like, yeah, Batman well, could really stay out of harm's way if he just had a distance weapon. Well, and Tim Drake was treated as the guy who's not a huge physical threat. And I think that the reason they gave him the bow staff was that he has range. Yeah. Because he's not physically that good. He's no Batman. He's not even like Jason Todd. You know? I mean, yeah, if you can, like, crack a dude over the dome with a you know metal pole, that's yeah. gonna, I don't care how big you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's winning the fight, and then he takes out he takes out a slingshot, which I think was a dumb like uh, whatever. Okay, so, so he, he takes, takes out, out a gun. <laughs> really, he's just taking out the poor man's gun. Yeah, why didn't he just have a gun with rubber bullets? Because it's I I don't know. That's that's not a bad question. I don't know. Like that would uh, be really helpful. So the dude that originally shot Robin, he's hanging out with the new recruit, you know, the new Bracuda's new guy. And it's his first mission with Bracuda, you know. Mm-hmm. So these two guys uh, are trying to blast Robin. Robin hits them both with one stone, which is the point of the title of the book there. Knocks the guns out of their hands. The cops show up. They say, hey, we saw you try and kill that child that we can't identify. That's good enough. We're taking you to jail, Bracuda. He beat me up with a pole. Yeah, none of this nope. really squares. Child. Yeah, none of this. I, I, I don't know, know about any of this. You can't identify who it was. And then it turns out that the uh, the new recruit that Bakuda had was actually an undercover agent for the police, right? 
but he's actually a double undercover agent because he's actually Jean-Paul Valley in disguise. Oh, see, I thought, I thought, I he was thought it was Bruce Wayne. I thought no, it was Bruce too. Uh, understandable. It's understandable if you weren't steeped in Batman lore, but it's definitely Jean-Paul Valley. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, sorry to believe you, James. I think you're right. Nice. They were trying, DC was also trying to warm people up to, nobody really doubted that Jean Paul was going to be the new Batman. I don't think. I think everybody knew that, so they were just trying to kind of warm people up to that idea. But you could see how me and Shay could think that. Yeah, sure. Which is why I I, I corrected it instead of uh, saying you fucking idiots. I mean, you kind of did. You just didn't say you fucking because idiots. you guys called me a fucking idiot first. No, we didn't. You we did. did not. That's you that's can. your insecurity speaking. You can't. Look, listen, I, I know my insecurity very well. I know exactly <laughs> the, the sound of that voice. I checked that. In, I checked my insecurities oil. Yeah, seriously. Every every three thousand miles. By the way, you don't have to change your car's oil every three thousand miles. Okay, that's leftover shit from the seventies when cars yeah. were built like garbage. You do. You. You're, wait. You're, wait. wait uh, no. No. Okay. I don't care about manual. this anymore. I, I'm right. going back to this comic book. So okay, okay. read your manuals all. Anyway, yes. Asriel is occasionally p- filling in for Batman. Yes. But if you if this is the case, then Tim Drake doesn't know this because he goes, Batman, yeah. you're back early. Oh, he calls him Batman, but not Bruce. If they're in yeah. the cave together, so he's So you're Bruce. saying Tim does not recognize the difference between. Well, he's just calling John, John Paul, Paul Valley Batman. Entirely. And, yeah. Entirely Batman, or entire, <laughs> entirely possible that, yeah, he doesn't know. I think it's more like he's just calling Jean-Paul Batman because he's dressed up like Batman. But why does he say Batman, you're back early? Yeah, because oh, he let him yeah, believe. He let right. him believe that it's Bruce, even though it's clearly not. And he oh, even says wow, your that's... plan went well. Like he, yeah. ta- like he was the one he uh, talked to. That's why I thought this was Bruce Wayne. But yeah, this is fucked up that Jean-Paul Valley is not only pretending to be Batman, but he's pretending to be Bruce Wayne for Robin. Well, Jean-Paul was an unhinged man. And then he takes off. So we see that he's carrying around the prosthetic uh, face that he wore as Barkuda's undercover man. Uh, and he's just been carrying that around in his Batman costume, I guess. But then he takes off his cowl at the end. And yeah, wait, we he was, see but he was the under. Wait, he, so he was also the undercover man, but that would imply that he was an undercover police officer and they know who he is. Yeah, I don't know how they arranged this. Like, did they. Did he I guess Batman? maybe when he met with Gordon, he said. Oh, Here's what's yeah. gonna happen. I'm gonna send a, gonna right. send a guy. Yeah, the yeah, guy. Or, yeah, okay. yeah, and it's him. And then he pulls off the cowl, and we see his blonde hair. Yeah, I just thought this was Bruce know. Wayne wearing the wig of the yeah. undercover agent. Exactly. No, nope. nope, because the undercover agent wasn't wearing a wig. That's just Jean-Paul's I know, but hair. I thought Bruce Wayne was wearing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Understandable, understandable. But no, it's 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 doesn't really fit well in the chronology. But you're right, though. If I don't. If I haven't read a bunch of Batman yeah. stuff prior to this, I wouldn't know what's going on. It's really confusing why Bruce's hair's hair color changes over the course of the story. Yeah, sure. All right. Okay. It's kind I of just, a mess. I just, I just thought he was wearing the wig of the undercover agent, and this was to show us that Bruce Wayne was the undercover agent all along, and he hadn't had a chance to change his hair yet. Yeah, but if that's the case, why would he put his Batman costume on over the uh, wig? You're right. Just pull the yeah, wig off. Yeah, take that, pull the wig off. Okay, 100%. Yeah. All right. Well. Settled. Settled, yes. All right. Also, also, none of it fucking matters. Yeah, none of it does. None moving of it matters on. at all. Uh, moving on to the next story, which I'm going to say is probably the weakest link here. Uh, it's the Blue Devil in Life's a Beach, which I'm told is some kind of a joke, but I didn't get it. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get jokes. Yeah, this is written yeah. by Gary Cohn and Dan Mishkin with art by Pete Moriarty and Dan Davis. Yeah, so Blue Devil is ridiculous, and in this in this comic, he fights an armadillo dog. <laughs> so this is another uh, who also last... trapped him in the costume, and also it's a costume. Right. Yeah, right. So Blue Devil is a not a super well known character. He's also what I call my erection when I have tight constricting pants on. <laughs> you Blue Devil, Devil. Yeah, move that thing around. Ugh. Yeah. No, Blue Devil was a um a stunt man who uh, played a character called the Blue Devil uh, in this costume that's basically like a, a blue demon guy with a high a high vest, uh, you know, high-collar vest thing and some little panties and some little booties. And uh, he pissed off uh, a demon or something called Neberos, and Neberos fused him to his costume. So he's stuck inside the costume, and he just looks like a demon man. But he also oh. has powers. He has powers. He was imbued with powers. Uh, he was conceived as more of a lighthearted, fun, kind of Spider-Man-y character and gradually became a little bit darker, as a lot of things in DC tended to do. Uh, not he was, he was in the Swamp Thing show. He was on the Swamp Thing show. He's pretty good in that. 
Uh, but yeah, he's not really oh, had a it, lot. How'd of the costume look? In, uh, well, it looked pretty good, but the thing is, up. So let's show well, it to the, us. well, what you have to keep in mind is the Swamp Thing show was cut short. Uh, I want to see what it for, looks like. for legal for um, financial reasons. So you don't really get to see him in the costume much because they had to uh, cut short the last couple episodes. It's Blue Devil, Swamp Devil. I'm see. I'm trying to write <laughs> type at the same time. <laughs> That's good. So yeah, there he was. Um, so here he's more of an actual blue devil. Yeah. Well, the costume kind of takes on more demonic properties. Yeah. I see. But here is just like a guy who had a devil costume. I think it's just the art is. He not... just looks like he's in a 1990s heavy metal video. Yeah. 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 He looks. He looks good. He looks like not, uh, Eddie from an, from an Iron Maiden album. Yeah. Cover. yeah. It's blue Iron Maiden. Yeah, there we go. Blue so, Eddie. That's all. But he here, is. but here, it's not demonic it's he's just a, a guy wearing a costume right. and who has superpowers yeah i think that's just because the, it was it was quicker to get the art done that way uh but apparently something has happened in the previous uh, issue of the blue devil adventure and neberos the demon that infused him to his costume has been uh freed onto the real world and he's on a beach and he's trying to eat a dog yeah right yeah so uh, basically what's happening here Life's is a beach is the name of the story Life's a beach, I still don't get it It's like life's a bitch I don't understand what that is Is that a phrase? I don't, I don't get it Anyway, so Blue Devil is there with his buddy uh, What is his name? I don't Morty. Know. Morty Morty, his buddy Morty, 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 Morty his, sh- his shape-shifting buddy that he hangs out with That was with. surprisingly pretty good for my first attempt ever Of trying <laughs> to be Rick from Rick and Morty Yeah, you could have replaced, uh What's his name? You could have been the new guy. They should have let that pervert keep his job. Yeah, let all the perverts keep their jobs. I mean, that show sucks now. Well, it he also put... seems like maybe he didn't. Act, like, he was maybe a little perverted. No, but he, he wasn't probably he probably did, like, at least half of it. Yeah, is that enough? 50%? I mean, he was I'm found... More, I'm, I'm more focused right now on the fact that Morty has this weird-ass, right. like, long hair on top, but then he bleached the undercut. Looks great. I think it's like a buzz cut, and they just got the color wrong of what yeah. buzz cut hair would look. I don't know. Yeah. I think he's full hipster. I think oh. it's bleached. Well, he's also a shapeshifter, so you know he can oh. just yeah, which I did not get. Wants, you know, it could yeah, yeah. So they're trying to stop uh, Neberos, who I'm probably going to pronounce that ten different ways because I don't remember his actual pronunciation. So is Blue Devil fused to his costume, yeah. or is it like as in he put it on and now he's trapped in it, or he? He, now his, it's his it, skin. Or his outer form became the costume. I think it's the latter. I think it's that the outer form became the so costume. So he's a real blue devil. He's, he's not be- like a guy wearing like a rubber suit trapped in the rubber suit. I think that's what it is. The The, the rubber suit kind of became real skin. They likened it to, uh, they were thinking of the thing when they made him in terms of like being trapped inside of, you know. So he still has. So he could still like go to the bathroom and stuff. I think he still has a dick and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I I didn't want to say like that, but yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you wanted to. You wanted to really keep it coy this time. Mike, you used the phrase uh, "cut off his dick" in the first thirty seconds of this episode. No swears, though. No swears. (laughs) So, um, so, uh, so he's basically just dead man. Uh, he even yeah. has the, even has kind of the same costume because instead of being a, a corpse, though he's a devil. Yeah, I mean, I much prefer Dead Man. Personally. And some like supernatural force made him that way. I'd say Dead Man's more interesting, and and also you can't see Dead Man unless he's possessing somebody. What are is, Blue Devil's superpowers? I, I didn't know what they were. I think he can just blast energy. I really so think does that's all he, it is. So where does his pitchfork come from? I think his his pitchfork was part of the costume, and it's been imbued with some sort of demonic mystical powers but as we'll see at the end of this story he actually is able to harness that and physically propel power out of his and this is now. the this is the but demon that's new that, i guess and this yeah. is the demon that did it to him yes yes this is the demon that fused him okay because the demon's a moron the demon is an idiot he doesn't seem to know big what he's old doing. idiot he's he's just uh eating he's obsessed with eating because he's modeled after me after yeah, every workout say, you yeah why don't these eggs have more protein i'm dying know. I don't know, you just gotta eat more eggs. <laughs> LOL. Five I'll, is just not enough. Are you up to five now? I cut no, no, back no. to I'll, three. I'll eat I'll eat three in like a breakfast burrito with, with cheese and turkey bacon and a wrap and all that kind of stuff, and I'll still yeah. be starving afterwards. Yeah, you gotta make two. Yeah, I gotta make well six eggs, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and make go ahead. I, I think it's okay for you to do that. Go ahead. 
I think you can have as many. I think I could probably eat a dozen eggs, no problem. Oh, uh, yeah, easily. Easily eat a dozen eggs. Yeah, but you should work out. It's expensive. And eggs. wasteful. And wasteful. If you, I kind of feel like bodybuilding oh, is, is kind of wasteful and selfish. Um, yeah, when it, when it gets past the point of just health. Because you're basically just hoarding resources for your own vanity. Well, you're improving your genes to yeah, pass, it on, I mean, pass on your I, better genetic material. No, but, that, but you see what I'm saying, right? It, it is wasteful, but it's also like, you know, we need to have something to entertain ourselves. We gotta it's have also something. not sustainable. Like when you get to a certain size, yeah, you like you, you're going you're gonna to drop off eventually. There's no right. way you can keep it up. That's why I've kind of like refocused on just cardio with a little bit of strength training and everything, but yeah. mainly I just focus on cardio. I cut down to calisthenics and with a little weight calisthenics. training. Calisthenics, yeah. It's just, you can't, it's so much fucking work and it goes away immediately if yeah, you stop doing it. Yeah, immediately. I'm just, if you're not like genetically built to be of a certain size, like, yeah. and you're not making your living based off of how big and muscular you are, I don't see the fucking point. Dude, it's it's so fucking hard to do it. I'm gonna stick with those... lean and mean. That's what, how my body wants to live. It wants to be yeah. lean and mean, and I'm just gonna lean to like lean into it. It'll Dude, you see those pictures of Jason Momoa like a day after he stops training and he's fat? Like, what well, the hell happened here? That's Hollywood steroids. Like, when, well, when, like yeah. he that's just how he looks normally, but he doesn't have those steroids to help him stay trim as well as big. So anyway, so uh, Nebros wants to feed, and he sees Blue Devil as like a little brother. And so they're trying to manipulate that. It seems like uh, he forgot that he's the guy who turned him into Blue Devil. He does not, yeah, he does not hold on to the memory of the fact that, hey, wait a minute, uh, we're actually enemies and we've met before and like, and and Blue Devil has to exploit this fact. He also doesn't hold on to the fact that like Blue Devil just tried to attack him and then immediately Neboros is like, buddy. Yeah, hey, buddy. Well, you know what? It's that's a lot like dogs or animals. They're food based, and whoever's going to give you the food, you're my friend, even if you used to be my enemy. Why did he fuse him to the suit? I don't remember. Did he I, want I, a friend? He. <laughs> I don't know. It may have been his hubris. Legit seems like it could be a thing. He's pretty hilarious. Was he Neveros? trying to eat him? Yeah, Neveros is a hilarious guy. Yeah, he's he and he looks we didn't I guess we kind of described how he looks, but yeah, he's like an armadillo demon man. He looks like a Futurama character. He does. Yeah. He kind of looks like the the dude the 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 alien that anchors the news. <laughs> yeah, man, that's not that's who you're thinking the of. voice I hear in my head. You're not yeah. think, that's not who you're thinking of. You're thinking of that king lizard. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah, that guy to watch, too. Wanted to watch the rest of Ali McBeal. And he mm-hmm. said, he's gonna, we're going to raise the temperature of Earth one million degrees a day for six days. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Love it. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah, let's just imagine it's that guy. Yeah. So he's like, so uh, Blue Devil's thinking, all right, if I can just kind of lure this guy away, I can open up like a portal somewhere and we can get rid of this guy. So we just got to convince him so, that. So he can open portals. No, I think they have a, they they have a device. He, I don't oh. think he can do it with his powers. They have like some sort of matter transport device. Blue Devil is all over the place. <laughs> he's he's not anybody's favorite so character. He's what did he do for a living that got infused to the suit? He, he was a he was a stuntman. A stuntman, and he was making what a Blue Devil movie. Yeah, he was. He okay, was the stunt so guy he's who did he's that. a he's a, uh, the based off of the DC Comics character, or no, like, this was an original like B movie character in so, the eighties. All right, so he's making a movie called The Blue Devil, right? Yeah, he <laughs> comes across this demon who looks like he's from Futurama. Mm-hmm. The demon wants a best friend, and he right. sees this guy wearing a demon suit, and he uses his magic to just mm-hmm. turn him into what the suit is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, basically. And now he has some kind of energy collection ability that he can harness through the prop of the the trident yes. from the movie he was I, filming i think that's mostly true yes and now he has a he has a best friend that's a guy who can shapeshift yes and he looks <laughs> yes. like the russian coder from goldeneye listen they were trying to figure out what to do with this guy uh yeah i think there's more to it but that's probably pretty accurate. That's probably eighty mm-hmm. percent there. Yeah. Wow. And they also have access to like dimensional gateways that well, he least... himself, as a deep magic demon man, cannot generate. For this adventure, yes, they do. For so, this particular is adventure. can he take off the clothes of the costume, no, or does he's he have stuck? This so, how does he body. go to the bathroom? I again, I think when it fused to his body, it, the costume became his skin. 
and it's sort of like the the, the so the can tights he take too? off the blue and the yellow? I would bet he piece. could. I would bet he could take off the overpiece. But can he so take, take off, off his shoes? Skin. So the costume part, Probably. like say, like the collar and the shoulder pads yeah, and the boots, yeah. like that was just clothes. But I could the, see that. But the costume itself, like the actual skin becomes suit, skin. becomes him. Okay. I think I think that's what it is. But does he have a penis? Or I would what? bet he does. So how is he going to the bathroom? Okay. Out of his blue devil, out of his little blue devil. All right. Yeah, I think it works. He takes I think this off is the. A, outer... I think this is a bad character, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I I am firmly of the belief that it's good, another, bad, or bad, bad. This is another gunfire. <laughs> oh, I am wow. firmly. I am firmly of the belief that there's really no bad characters. It just depends on how they're written. No, uh, I remember you told me that they DC Comics specifically created this character yes. to lure who? who well, back Steve. To... So Steve Ditko. Uh, was hanging around the office at DC. He looked like he wanted to do some DC work. And so I cannot remember who, but a couple of people created this character and they thought about all their favorite things from Steve Ditko. Uh, he was, Steve Ditko was a fan of the Blue Devils fucking football team or whatever it was, like a college basketball football team. team, basketball team. He was a fan of Blue Devils and they were thinking about like, oh, trapped in a suit like Iron Man and he's fun and acrobatic like Spider-Man. All, all our favorite uh, Steve mm. Ditko tropes all pulled together. This is going to be the perfect character for him. And they pitch it to him. And Steve Ditko goes, uh, I'll do it if this is what you want me to do, but it's really not the kind of thing I'm interested in. Yeah, why didn't they just tell him, do whatever you want, if they I wanted to know. entice him to come in? I don't know. I mean, I guess he maybe they already spent the money know. paying the writer and the artist to come, to come up, up with, with this guy. guy. Yeah, maybe. I don't God know. God damn. He's all right. He's they fine. They really try to make this guy work, huh? They got him. He had like 70 issues of his solo Get series. the fuck out of he here. No, it while. didn't. All right. Uh, just put Blue yeah, Devil on the wheel, I suppose, was... and figure out what so the hell's going on Was with he guy. a stuntman in the Swamp Thing TV show? Uh, he was a former stuntman. He was running uh, like a, he had like a B movie uh, r- shop that he ran, and he was stuck inside the town until he broke the curse. And it was clear that they had something more intended for him before they had to cut the last two or three episodes because he ends up breaking the curse by like, all he does is like help open a door in a basement and get some people out. Like it's really, really underwhelming. And I, and so if you watch the Swamp Thing show, don't hold it against them how rushed the last couple episodes are. It's not their fault. So he's able to lift the curse and leave town, but it, 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 he didn't really do anything. I'm sure he was intended to do more. Hmm. It really seemed like they were setting up Justice League Dark because, like, Madame Xanadu's in there. Phantom Stranger has a bit part. It seemed like that's what they were uh, hoping for someday, but never came to pass. So. Anyway, so that's Blue Devil. And so, really, just for a couple pages, uh, Blue Devil tries to keep the police off of Neberos's case. Uh, and they, uh, they're they just trying to lure him over to this uh, gravity or this matter transporter that they have somewhere. Right? Somewhere, because like they that. have access to that. They wouldn't have access just, to that. Wouldn't that shut down the power grid, like when everyone's got their air, air conditioning on? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much power a hypothetical matter transporter draws. Like, yeah, I guess maybe like none. It's, it's maybe, made maybe, up science. Yeah, I guess. Like, I don't know. So, you know, they take the battle into the city. Well, just they're not really battering at this point. What's going wait, on wait, wait. now? I'm sorry. Yeah? You have to go back to the city because there's a man screaming. Yeah. Look, that's what's been missing from my screenplay. A cheap alien ripoff. Yeah. This man has the thickest arms I've ever seen yes. and is wearing a shirt Guns. with Boris of well, Boris and Natasha fame from Bullwinkle, yeah. from Rocky nice. Bullwinkle. It's yeah. just uh, amazing. While he's wearing, wearing Zubas. Yeah. He's wearing he's Zuba, Zuba shorts. Zuba yeah. shorts, which was, that was a, a, a niche item to get the yeah. shorts. Oh, so yeah. like uh, the Blue Devil, so the, the, this demon, that mm-hmm. that's this guy, he's trying to eat people. He's eating and, any. He wants to eat anything he can. And the Blue Devil is just coming up with excuses of why they can't. And while they're doing that, they're being attacked by the army. Right. And he's managing to hold off the army. So the army's going like, what side are you on? We're trying to kill this demon. Like, this guy made me interesting. Yes. Well, it, it's... A, so it, we see his super strength. He can pick up a tank. Yeah. I, I do wonder if, if Nebros dies, can he never break the curse? Is that why, that why he's trying Would to Would he want alive? to? He just picked That's up a, a tank. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So uh, they end up at, at the Werner Brothers studio in Burbank, California. Eh? Eh? I don't get it. And oh, like Warner Brothers. Oh, I get it. Yes, yes. Oh! Yeah, yeah, Werner. Yeah, yeah German shame, stuff. We're done. We're done. Yeah, we German get stuff. That. Yeah. Oh. Um. Uh, and uh, eventually, they lure him into the area where Morty has set up the matter transport. Morty! 
That's all I think of. It's not bad. It's not bad. I bet if Uh, I practice it, I could have a pretty good one over time. It's an 8.5. So they lure Neberos over, and they're like, hey, man, other side of here, here's a big feast we prepared. And Neberos goes, you know what? I'm not entirely sure I trust you. I'm going to throw you in there first. Yeah, wise. For a guy who's kind of a moron. For a guy that he had his moment. He had his broken clock moment. So does he forget? did he forget that he turned Blue Devil into Blue Devil? Well, he calls him little brother, so I assume he knows. But again, he's he's an idiot with you know de- a demon brain, you know. So he's able to resist getting thrown into the portal, and in the course of the fight, Nebros goes, "Ah, I, I see you're trying to trick me." And Blue Devil somehow manages to conjure all of his power through his fist instead of through his trident. And this is the first time he's ever done this. He doesn't know why this is happening. And this pushes Nebros into the matter transporter. He's gone. Everything's theoretically okay now. Yep. Right? The end. Well, he sends them to another world where it be the demon just becomes their civilization's problem. Yeah, yeah which I Blue, did not understand. Not the most heroic thing Blue Devil could they have They don't done. seem like bad guys. No, they send them to another planet uh, full of what they're called Maldorians. But they're all different looking. They're all, there's no unified look to these species. And, uh, and it says Nebros, that they would deserve each other? Right. They say like, well, either the, the, the Maldorians will find a way to stop them, or if not, you know, they kind of deserve it. Which was, I'm assuming they've encountered these guys before, and these guys were kind of dicks. But uh, yeah, it seems like Nebros is going to just wreck their shit. And that's it. That's it. The end. Genocide. Just kinda, we never Our saw hero, him. Blue Devil. What if because he turned him into a devil, he's, he's like subtly doing horrifically yeah. evil things well his mind is re- shifting without realizing yeah. it yeah his mind is slowly changing it's being taken over mm-hmm. you know you can't be in that body and not eventually have your brain kind of change right. he like goes like and now our superhero guest of honor here at the such and such rehabil drug rehabilitation clinic the blue devil and everyone claps and he comes in hey guys i just want to let you know life is short and you should probably just do whatever you want and then all the children applaud Oh, that drug addicts. Oh, oh, this was. Oh, I thought this was. Uh, I thought this dr- was like dr- a, a dare drug, kind of thing. Not the drug rehab clinic, and um, they're all in treatment. He's like, yeah, just. It'll be fine, guys. He's like, yeah, maybe just do heroin. Look, we got matter transporters. There are aliens. It'll be fine. Like, who cares? All right. I, so I got trapped in this blue devil suit. <laughs> this was uh, sort of the nadir of the book here. And it can happen to you the too. Life. The nadir, the the worst Um, part, the bottom. Unless you say no to drugs, this could happen to you, kids. We got a big bounce back here, all right? The third story, Sarn, everyone's new favorite character, Peacemaker, Mm -hmm. in Village Green Preservation Society, after the the Kinks album, named after the Kinks album, if you caught that. I didn't. Um, And it's great. Uh, The artist by Gary Barker and Jose Marzen Jr., but it's written by none yeah. other than Dark Side Scout's favorite, Mike Barron. Yeah, Woo! Mike Barron. I and didn't catch that either. Yet another appearance. He's written The Badger, written and created The We've Badger in Nexus. We've done a lot of his books. We've done well, a lot of his books. I think yeah. you mentioned before, James, that Mike Barron was the one that made Peacemaker's crazy dad in his head no, stuff. Paul, Paul Kupperberg. Oh, Maybe we should okay. contact Mike That's Barron my bad. and ask him if he wants to be on the show. I don't think he would agree with our politics. Well, Who cares? We'll just tell we him, just hey, We just won't dude, talk politics. We'll just tell him that, hey, we, we do a comedy podcast show, and we've done a shit ton of your comics, and we think you're great. Well, if you want to reach out to him. Yeah, I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to give it a shot. Would that be uh, fun? Do you guys want to do that? Like, I mean, I don't know what to do with the guy. We just talk to him and ask him, what, like, where do you get his freaky ideas? Okay. Uh, I mean, if you can arrange that, I will talk to Mike Barron. Yeah, I'll figure it out. We like Mike Barron. Yeah. Well, no, we love, he's, he's made a lot of fantastic work, but you know. Yeah, right. I'm sure he'd love to talk about the badger. Yeah. There probably isn't a lot of badger conversation going on, right? No, but we think he's great. Yeah. I do love the badger. We well, no, everybody, it. the badger is a very well-regarded character. He's just not that well-known, but yeah. Oh, absolutely. really? I thought it was just us. No, I mean, again, it is uh, everyone who has read the badger. It's kind of like the first Velvet Underground album. Everybody who bought the first Velvet Underground album went out and formed a band, but there weren't that many of them. You know, everybody likes the Badger. They just never, most people have never read the Badger. I think that's true. Anyway, this is an exciting adventure about leasing land. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So God, I'm so tired of worrying about real estate and <laughs> like prices and owners and, oh God, no capitalism specifically. Well, this well, one isn't about capitalism. Well, they make fun of Peacemaker for being a capitalist. They like talk shit to him. 
Well, because to them, everyone's a capitalist. Well, this yeah, is Poland, 1993, and the communists have been voted out of Poland because apparently voting works sometimes, I guess, apparently. Mm -hmm. You vote in the Soviet Union. Well, this was, the first, the, this was like the first Poli free Polish election in a long, I don't know. There, it, it, was a, it was an historic moment in Polish history uh, where they were able to vote for this new party in, and uh, that's how they ousted the, the Soviet, or that's how they ousted the, uh, the communists. So I don't know. Uh, so anyway, Christopher is uh, Christopher Smith, AKA peacemaker is going to check on his family's land, but he can't get access to it because the new government is saying, listen, this land has been leased, and besides that, it's it's there's toxic chemicals, all kinds of stuff from the previous regime. We can't let you in here anyway, right? He and also, you're a capitalist in, scum. Uh, he blows, blows smoke in Peacemaker's face, which probably isn't the best idea if he knew who he was. No, right now he just looks like the Punisher, yeah, which is right. kind of mm -hmm. who he is at the this best point. Best character. Yeah, the greatest, most well thought out character. So they tell him, "Yeah, get the fuck out of here." Yeah, but they say it in Polish. So they say in Polish. A lot of so, yeah, so uh, Peacemaker has no idea what was said. He just hears sounds. And he gets He's into uh, his... He speaks in Polish, too. Does he? Yeah. In this? Yeah. Oh, good for him. Oh, yeah, he says, what corporation? Oh, yeah. Because a corporation has leased the land, right? Well, he says, why do you guard it? What's to become of it? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I guess yeah. he's fluent in Polish. Just like John Cena is fluent in Mandarin or whatever. He the sure fuck. is. Yeah. He learned Mandarin so he could promote WWE in uh, in China. Yeah, uh, it, ne it never came to be. It never happened. Oh, it didn't really. Oh, well, no, that's a shame. So even now, uh, who eventually did they cater to? I think it's Saudi Arabia. Hmm. So Peacemaker gets in his purple van and he drives away and he's thinking like, all right, we bought the land in 1895 or something like that. And for 40 years, nobody in my family has seen it. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to take it back by dressing up like Peacemaker. And, and you know, if you don't pay up. the taxes on it, they take, they seize it. Like it's, not, uh, it's probably not his anymore. Well, it's also a new, it's a new government. It's a whole new government regime. So I don't know. I don't know. They're if the not going to have paperwork laws... from pre-World War II. Mm. Yeah, that's that fair. It. Squatters' rights, maybe just whoever yeah, wants to point, take it. Yeah, if you're, hey, you're not using it. Why do you get to own it? So then we get the splash page where he's in costume, a man yeah. peacemaker in his garden hose veins, and we see that he has a cock. He has a hell of a blue devil in like his pants. He's, he doesn't have a wee dick. He no, has no, a no, cock. No. He has a big old cock. And uh, I'm not a military expert or anything, but I think that may be the worst possible way to keep your grenades on you. Yeah, probably. What if you're just kind of they're just kind of hanging on the side of his belt. Um, he's also got one of those big chunky belt buckles that seen girls would be wearing in another decade or so. Is Peacemaker take steroids? I bet he does. I I think he probably took all the steroids. Yeah. yeah like, look steroids. at the size. Of, look yeah. at the veins. Yeah. Like, yeah. Pure yeah. garden hose. Picking John Cena to play him was a good idea. It was pretty dead on. Well, this was before he was portrayed as a doofus, but uh, yeah, physically, absolutely, you got the right guy here. I mean, they may portray him as a doofus, but they also redeemed his character quite a bit, like in terms of a character as in how he is as a man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's definitely improved as a person. Like here, he's like a, just like a psycho vigilante who just shoots yeah. people. I'd he, like to see yeah. like Carl Urban play that version of Peacemaker. Oh, but I think I might just be remembering Judge you remember Dredd. You remember Dredd, Dredd yeah. yeah. That yeah. movie Dredd. is so good. Yeah. So, yeah, this was just the time when Peacemaker was just sort of this unhinged madman. Uh, since the 80s, he now believes or possibly actually is talking to his dead Nazi father through his helmet. Uh, that may or may not be real, but he believes it. And uh, he's just kind of unhinged. He doesn't really get involved with anybody else because nobody really wants to get involved with him because he's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So my man has zero peripheral vision, by the way. Can't see out of the sides of anything. Really not Nothing. a good idea. Yeah, not a good idea for a helmet. Uh, but he decides, all right, I'm going to go investigate uh, the land, my family's land, see what's going on, see if anything weird's going on. And he gets hit by an EMP. Right? Yep. It's completely knocks him on his ass. So he, he loses his, um, his jet pack, falls into some goo, some toxic goo. Yeah, I'd and, be concerned uh, about all that. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. seem too concerned with the fact that he's landed in toxic sludge. Yeah, yeah. Like, very clearly big. toxic sludge. Yeah, but he's too busy. But he cocks his Uzi and blows the guy away. 
I mean, the trend will probably deal with that. It'll because cancel out that, that toxic slush. Because having a gun is the best superpower. It is. So he blows away this dude that hit him with the EMP. What are the guy with the electro gloves? He flew and he had electro gloves and he was no match for an Uzi. Yeah, a gun that uh, pretty much anyone could get. You can just go buy an Uzi. Yeah, man, not that hard. So he, he investigates this dude. He pulls off his mask. He sees he's like a lizard man. Oh, no. He's a Clinton. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He forgot to shift back. Yeah. He forgot to shift back before he got caught. Well, I got fully convinced at this point. So he shows a lizard man. And then he, like, removes something. And there's a cobra emblem. And oh, yeah. I immediately went, oh, shit. G.I. Joe crossover. Yeah. Yeah, and I got Joker. really excited. No, no, no. The DC had their own Cobra and yep. it was the same gimmick. That's yeah, what I learned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see we'll see him in just a moment. Like they are Marvel Comics made G.I. Joe, right? They were supposed to be like Shield. And yeah, did, Larry Hama decided, was writing yeah, it. They decided to just make it G.I. Joe and then they took I Cobra. Mean, shit, Larry Hama might still be writing it. Which Cobra mm. it was first? The Marvel G.I. Joe Cobra or the DC Cobra? I assumed it was the Marvel Cobra rather than the G.I. Joe Cobra, but I, I like, guess I don't why know. Why would they call, if they knew that existed, right, why would DC call their group Cobra? Because there's only so many cool things they to do. They could have just called after. them Snake. I mean, you're talking about two companies that both had a character named Scarecrow. Why did people feel the need to each have their own Scarecrow? Which I don't is, know. You're, you're, you gotta get shit out the door. There are was, two Scarecrows? Yeah, yeah Marvel a, had a Scarecrow, and it was the sucks. same dealy. <laughs> He's nothing. He's nothing at all. Uh, I don't know, I think man. he was like a throwaway Ghost Rider character, I want to yeah, say. Yeah, it wasn't anything. So, Peacemaker's uh, looking at his house, the house that he can't move into. And uh, his Nazi dad starts yelling at him and saying, like, hey, man, you got to defend this house. This is my Nazi house. <laughs> He's like, and, stop uh, it, Dad. You're embarrassing me in front of the reader. <laughs> yes. He's like, stop it. Listen, I'm going to do it anyway, but not because you're a Nazi, but because I think it's the right thing to do. And then uh, his, his ghost dad walks around the background checking his nails. Ghost dad. Yeah, he does this move where he does the, the walk with the Heil Hitler kind of thing. But I think he did the exact same move in the Paul Kupperberg issue of Peacemaker that we looked at. I think at so, too. Ago. Yeah, I think he's just looking at his cuticles. Well, isn't that goose step? Or was it? Is that called yeah. goose stepping? Yeah, he's just goose stepping. Well, he could be having a stride, though. He's in a goose suit. It's an old circus term. So then we flash over to Cobra headquarters, which is shaped kind of like a cobra's hood. The entire headquarters is pretty nice. Yep. And uh, so we see that Cobra seems to be uh, developing some sort of a plot based on selling televisions to people. Does yeah, it's else... very confusing. Well, it's the first issue. We don't we don't see what happens afterwards, but Cobra has purchased the land from the Polish government and they didn't realize that this land was connected to Christopher Smith, AKA peacemaker. So now Cobra's pissed because he's like, dude, we could have, if you would have done your proper research, we wouldn't have bought this parcel of land or we would have dealt with peacemaker before we bought this parcel of land. Now we got a problem, right? Probably. Yeah. But it's like, well, how would I know? Well, I mean, that's what computers are for. That's what research is for. That was yeah, the job. Was 1993 computers. We just saw Bruce Wayne have a laptop. Uh, we don't know what that was. That could have been a cigar box. Yeah, it could have. It was very it. tiny. He left town because when he leaves town, he really cuts loose. It was tiny. It was the dick of cigar boxes. Yeah. It wasn't the cock of cigar boxes. You know, Cobra is another euphemism for penises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know cobra. why you'd want that, though. Venomous you know what? and dangerous. So, yeah. I've been listening to my fairy smut books again. Mm. Uh, Crescent City, uh, number three, if, if oh. anybody's been listening to their fairy smut as well. Mm -hmm. And it's starting to get to me when books like this describe penises as heavy. Yeah, sometimes they are a little bit heavy. Sometimes they like, get a little weighty. Like yeah, the heavy girth. cock, and it's like, yeah. I, uh, that's... Uh, sometimes no. they retain water. That's yeah. what it sounds like. Like it's yeah. a fucking like watermelon. I, I don't think women quite understand how versatile the penis is. Mm. It is from day to day, minute to minute. It is like a completely, I don't recognize it sometimes. It's like, that's not what you looked like yesterday. It, no, it it's, is, it's constantly shifting. Yeah. It's con, It's like, it's like a blue it's, devil's buddy there. Yeah. I was going to say, it's like blue devil's best friend. It's totally, constantly, sh that's, totally, it's totally like, shape shifting. That's why I call it Morty. It's constantly shifting. It's constantly, this part's longer. This part's fatter. This part's heavier. This part's a little blue. What the fuck is going on? Mm-hmm doesn't make any sense. It's a confusing, strange organ. I can't blame women for not being able to write about it properly. Mm -hmm. Right. 
<sighs> so anyway, Cobra goes ahead and murders this guy for not doing his proper research. As you do. He's still a better boss than any boss I ever That's had. That's like changing the spelling. Like, like commenting about how like the, the guy you're arguing with online like spelled something wrong and you correct him. Like your Yeah, you gotta fuck him up. You gotta rip him apart. <laughs> I didn't understand what you're saying. Yeah, I don't know what what? You know, like uh you know when you're arguing with someone on the internet and you notice that uh, their argument had like uh they used the wrong your and yeah. they use yeah. it against them to win the argument. That's exactly what the Cobra guy did. Oh. He's, he's he getting him out of technicality. Oh, he's he's mad because the dude apologized and then blamed someone the computer. else. He blamed okay. the computer for the simulation being wrong. And Cobra's like, "That's two strikes, bro. You apologize, which I never want to hear." Yeah, and I then, apologize and then, this week. And then and then you shifted the blame. Also weak. Yeah, that's that's twice. You're so fired. So you gotta die. You gotta die. And he kills him. Yep. Well, you can't. I mean, he's part of a, a secret terrorist organization. You can't just fire him. Then he's gonna go tell somebody. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is well, the and Vorkuda style union. of management. They're union, so if it find if they find out that he gets like you know treated badly, it's easier just to kill it. Yeah, what a mess. So then Cobra alludes to a consumer electronics show in Prague, and that coupled with the fact that we're seeing a factory producing TVs suggests that Cobra has some sort of plan involving maybe I'm going to say maybe brainwashing people with TVs, something like that. Or in other words, providing them with normal TVs. Normal, normal television sets. Or TVs well, is... full of radiation? Well, I, this is I th- 1993. I think they're just running CNN or Fox But they're News. making it on that <laughs> land that is covered in chemicals and radiation and everything. Oh, land's cheap. Well, I tell you, if that TV is playing CNN or Fox News, it's definitely radioactive. <laughs> definitely going to give you cancer. Oh, um, that debate was so fucking it was crazy. Pretty fucking bad. It was pretty bad. I've seen a lot of people speculate that the reason they had this so unnaturally early in the cycle is so that they, so that Biden's poor performance would be obvious and they would have a bigger uh, opportunity to replace him. I don't uh, know. Who are they going to replace him with? You think? You think it's going to be Pritzker? That'd be. I literally bizarre. saw an article about that as we were preparing to record. Well, who else are going to use besides Whitmer, Pritzker? Newsom. There's, I've, there's a I've few heard candidates. Whitmer and Newsom. I had not heard Pritzker. The Pritzker I'd thing pr- just came other down than today. When, other than when Trump decided to randomly go after him. And I'd I was prefer like, oh, some- that. Dude, Pritzker would fucking eat him. I actually, for a billionaire, I kind of like, I've worked with Pritzker I'm, a couple I, times. I'm, on a I'm couple glad he's done. I'm glad. Uh, I was very pleased with how he handled COVID in Illinois. He's not that bad. No, he was a good governor. I thought and he was just going to be another shitbag rich guy just trying to make himself richer, yeah, which I'm so, sure there's a part of it. Yeah, I'm but I sure guess there is that aspect of like when you have so much money, eventually is, you, you stop yeah. working for more money. Like, I mean, not all, all people, because I mean, we also have like Jeff Bezos and stuff. But I guess there are some people that eventually go, I have all the money. I don't need to make more money. There are some humans out there. And yeah, I mean, maybe and this is a complex scenario, but. I do think that maybe the whole eat the rich thing didn't really work out and we need to figure out how to use the rich instead of trying to murder them because that's not happening. You know, yeah, and no. I don't know. Yeah, we had plenty of opportunities know. and they didn't but do didn't it. He also, they didn't do I, it. I do vaguely also remember him having a home with no toilets in order to pay less taxes. Right. Oh, well, are you trying to tell me you wouldn't try to pay less taxes? Well, tax scam? Not a scam. I'm not it's a, a Pritzker. It's a loophole. Okay. It's just yeah, a loophole. Dude. He's trying to save a little I money. I, I would. Things, I use loopholes to save money it's too. A, it's a literal poopole loophole. Ugh, gross. Get it? Get it? it? Get some help. Because it's no. like when you have anal sex. And oh, God you can. Can't oh, see. so you so so you can make poop jokes. That's not the kind of humor we do on this I show. I don't get to. Right. I mean, we don't. We don't say things like that around here. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, I'm. I'm. By the way, this we're recording this. Uh, after the Supreme Court verdict, before the supposed sentencing, so we don't every all of this might be very very different contextually by the time you hear it. Neither so, of them can be say, the president. Like there may not, not be. We may just decide we're not going to do presence anymore. Like maybe we shouldn't. Maybe well, just we stop. won't decide that. Somebody might. The Everyone for themselves. College. Everyone for themselves from now on. Yeah, the electoral college is all fucked up too. We need to fix that. Yeah. Anyway, so point is, keep that in mind that we're recording this on July 3rd, okay? Yeah, so we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. Happy 4th of anyway. July. Happy, happy birthday, America. Happy birthday, America. Things are going uh, real good. We're real proud of you. <laughs> oh, if you're an accelerationist, yes, they are. Uh, 
So, I mean, I was till I saw that debate. I'm like, all <laughs> right, we accelerated to the point I wanted. Now we can lay now up can we, the gas a little bit. <laughs> can we maybe like pull over for a little bit? I think break? we've hit the point where everyone realizes, okay, maybe we need to start changing Dude, stuff. This is what I said a couple episodes ago is that, all right, maybe we've taken it too far. Maybe the joke's gotten old and you were still, as of like two weeks ago, pushing that. No, no, no. The joke needs to keep going. It does. I mean, part of me feels it's, that way. You're but at it's crossroads. Like, if there's ever a time that we are going to reshape our existence what better time than when you know companies are laying everybody off because of artificial yeah. intelligence we're having these proxy wars with with russia and china but we're not calling it that yeah or iran you know but and we're doing all this fucked up shit and everyone and now they're not even lying to us for the reasons of why we're going to war they literally are telling us uh ukraine has a bunch of resources that we want well it turned out that you didn't have to lie all these years where we thought you had to lie to get what you wanted or to be greedy or to cover up your fuck ups. It turns out, no, you can just do whatever you want and then just say whatever you want and the rest of the world will just accept it. I think it's just like every, everyone, like they understand that we all realize that all wars are just fight, fighting for resources and control of resources. And so they're yeah. just like, well, what do you want to do? Not have resources? And I was like, all right, well, I, guess we, I guess we do. Yeah, I mean, you know what I, I want to do? Yeah. Uh, yeah, continue yeah, the book. Yeah. Continue the book. Fine. Yeah. Continue the book. What I was book. trying to say is I think that this whole TV thing is just, this was 1993 when there was the whole panic about like TV's going to rot your brain and everything. And so I think and maybe Mike Barron was making a, a little joke about how, you know, Cobra's going to use TV to rot your brain. Just like that's... Batman forever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was happening. Yeah, exactly. That was just a couple years later. What happened so, in Batman Forever? Uh, the Riddler used a TV. Jim Carrey specifically <laughs> used a, yes. a TV device that sucked out the brains of anyone watching TV and put it in his own brains. Very oh. subtle. Very subtle. Can you tell I have only seen that movie once? The movie mm. is horrible. Uh, the Schumacher yeah. Cut is supposedly better, but yeah, I still don't think it's necessarily a great movie. No, no yeah. those Schumacher. Not for me. Were. I'm sure the kids who bought the toys loved it. Uh, I, I played the so I had the Batman Forever video game and I was really impressed with the graphics of it. And it turns out the graphics were literally just reskinned from Mortal Kombat, which is why Batman does the same Mortal Kombat crouch. And no shit. And huh. I'm like, oh shit, that is what it is. Yeah, I guess a lot of games reuse assets. Or maybe it was it was either Mortal Kombat and or the Street Fighter, the game, the movie, or the movie, the game. You know, they made a game oh, out of the movie, out of the too. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I, they maybe all use the same asset, but regardless, the Batman Forever assets were just recycled. And that's why it looks so awkward and not like Batman, but it was still fun. Anyway. Wow. Hey, speaking of 90s movies and Batman, I did find out last week that Paul Dini co wrote the Double Dragon movie. Get out of here. Oh, that yeah. movie's terrible. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is. Yeah, you got to pay the bills, got to take a job. Yeah, right? What do you want to do? They can't all be bangers. Like, yeah, really. Sometimes, have, it's, sometimes yeah. it's just a job. Yeah, sometimes you yeah, just Yeah, him write the... and uh, a dude that's written a lot of like young adult TV and uh, mm -hmm. books and stuff co wrote oh, the cool. Double Dragons movie. Well, that's cool. All right. So, as uh, Peacemaker is investigating this lizard man, a bunch of other lizard men intercept him. He starts blowing him away. Uh, his Nazi dad is telling him, you know, you can't abandon your position. He's like, dude, first of all, you're not real. Secondly, if I don't abandon this position, I might die. Yeah, right? and the house is destroyed anyway. Mm -hmm. House is already destroyed, and so there's one last uh, monster guy who's got a he's got a great shot at Peacemaker in the back of the skull. Batman uh, Peacemaker doesn't see it coming, but then he is blown away, massive overkill. Yeah, uh, some sort of rocket of fire and destruction kills this guy, and, and it's uh, well, it's Deathstroke. Yes, De yeah, Deathstroke. But he introduces shows up. himself as Terminator. Yeah, well, oftentimes he was referred to as the Terminator. No, um, I know him as Deathstroke the Terminator, but I've right? never heard him go, I'm Terminator. Oh, maybe uh, it's because he's not wearing his Deathstroke mask. Yeah, he's not wearing the two-tone mask. So he's like, ah, mm -hmm. I sound like an idiot if I call myself Deathstroke. He's dressed like a man. S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Well, call himself yeah. Slade. Call himself whatever you, you know, want. He but... looks a lot like a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, especially because of the missing eye. Oh, yeah, he's, he's Nick Fury in this He's one. just Nick Fury. Yeah, yeah he that's came all from he, a, he came from a, a convention, and he's cosplaying. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he also up. has a cock. Yes, uh, yes, he does. He likes teenage girls, if I remember his lore correctly. I think you that may is be right you about remembering that. correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tiro well, was not of age. Well, he's he's an old weird guy. He's seen a lot of adventures. You're gonna start doing that, weird shit. I guess if you kill people, which is like arguably the worst thing you can do. I guess yeah. everything else seems kind of like eh, whatever. Morality is a weird sliding scale. It gets right. weird. 
Uh, so yeah, he says, "Hey, let's get the fuck out of here," and uh, that's how the story ends. That's how the book ends. He goes, "You ever heard of this app called TikTok?" <laughs> what? He's, he's a like, TikTok guy. What do you mean? The things oh, that, oh, that's the kiddies how he's, are getting up to that's there. How that's how he's meeting the 14 Yeah, that's how he's oh, getting the kids. Right. Uh-huh. He's doing thirst trap videos because he's in shape. His, he's, uh, <laughs> no. Oh, God. Who is that Twitcher that just got in trouble? Dr. <laughs> yeah. Demented or some they shit? They all get in trouble because they're all a bunch of creeps. Dude. Yeah. Do it, if you're a man, don't bother doing thirst trap. No woman cares. No woman some cares do. about how good your ads are. There are, are some women who are awful. <laughs> <laughs> and uh the next you ever, issue... heard, you ever heard of size queens yeah that's a bro that's, the size queens are having an uprising right now imagine, imagine if i did queen, that imagine if i reverse that and imagine but didn't you just say that cocks are getting bigger though because of they it they are getting bigger yeah, yeah because of it yeah women are yeah. choosing bigger cocks for people to have kids with and people are just growing bigger cocks just because of their environmental conditions sexually yeah i mean i guess it's 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 evolution, baby. Yeah, right. Who as, has the biggest as, cock? As Pearl Jam said. Uh, next I issue, have the flap, flap, flappiest vagina. Next issue is called Acute Schizophrenia Paranoia Blues, which is a Bob Dylan reference. Mm-hmm. Or an episode of Cowboy Bebop. Which is probably also a, pop, a Bob Dylan reference. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I'm going to yeah. guess Bob Dylan came out before Cowboy Bebop. Yes. No. Yeah, Most things did. are a Bob Dylan reference. No. That's from just the ancient, way it works. From an ancient time, everything involving Bob Dylan. Yep. Well, he's been around for thousands of years. Yeah, he's an That's old it. man. What do we think? Uh, this was okay, I guess. Not as yeah. good as uh, Nighthawk. That was great. <laughs> it's no Nighthawk. Also, it, uh, and Br- Peacemaker has a bird on his helmet. He's got a dove. dove. He's got his dove. So many Shay? birds. What did you I think of Showcase? It. Yeah. You, you, you oh, like this okay. and not Nighthawk? You're crazy. Yeah, I thought yeah. this was a solid three star book. Ah, even it's, the Blue Devil. Yeah, Blue Devil. That was a down, real dumb. In, that was a real dumb, dumb comic. Listen, that was a long time ago. It was a sad long time ago in this podcast history when we looked at that Blue Devil comic. Yeah, thank God um, that time is over. Until, I it, have, until it comes time for all of us to edit the show and it do was, all the things. It was uh, acceptable. It was three out of five post workout snacks. <laughs> Should hold me till dinner. Don't eat well, horses. I, yeah, I gotta eat whatever's you're there. Eating, you're eating hawks and horses and dogs. Now, I'm, well, if if I were Neberos, what are you fucking RFK Junior? If I were Neberos, I'd eat dogs. Now? Yeah, he is barbecued that, a dog or something. Did he barbecue Jesus a dog? Christ. Shay, what are you talking about? RFK Junior eats dogs. Is that what yes. you're officially saying? Give him a break. He had a worm in his brain. All right. He he's ate the dog to, the same year he had the worm in his brain. He's, he's, he's trying to readjust. What, what, where was the dog? Like, what was the dog guilty of? Yeah, what did the dog do wrong? He was yeah. in Korea. Oh, oh come wow. on. That's, they eat dogs in Korea. You can just, have some dog while you're there. Do as the Romans the do. Yeah. All right. Um, it's time to talk about next time. Yep. And uh, we're going to look at the wheel, mm-hmm. as we usually so do. So big, so big. 51, I, well, there is one new item on there from Hermer Firmer, a request oh, for no. Kabuki issue one. Oh, yeah, right. I just put which that on there. I never read Kabuki, but I know what it is, and it's actually a, a good book. So uh, hopefully Ooh, that yeah. never comes up. Well, yeah, right? What, jo- <laughs> yeah, what jokes are we making <laughs> okay. here? Okay. I, I am a little confused as to why Hermer Firmer sent us like a legitimately good, artistically know, valid comic book. And we're like, oh, shit. Because he's trying shit. to tank the show. Yeah, it's Sabotage. trying to bring us down from the inside. You still yep. want us to be around for your fucking birthday, dude. Yeah, right. Your yeah. birthday's coming. You want us to do giant size. I want to do giant size man thing. <laughs> we all want to do giant size man thing come October. We all just want to say giant sized man thing. Yeah. That joke. Like, the jokes are done. Like, we just. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> in good. fairness, Steve Gerber. The heavy doing. giant sized man thing. He, giant he, sized he, man thing was written by a guy named Gerber. That's fucking awesome. He, it was. We've talked about this. That's like Steve the sound Gerber you make when you're cheeky. sucking on a dick. Girl. Gerber. Steve Gerber being a cheeky boy, he All definitely right. knew what he was doing. Oh, let's spin this wheel. Um, we've also got still have no. We've still never had a why book. Nope. Why you know why? Yeah, why you know why? Why you know why? And the last thing I say is, um, we've gotten some repeat wheel song suggestions, and we love you, thank you, but you got to listen back and make sure that we have not already played your wheel song suggestion. Mm-hmm. You got to listen to every episode and keep your own log of which wheel songs were played. There's a few people who are behind because they started the podcast from the beginning and they still oh, no. haven't they still haven't caught up. That's too much work to where we are now. So no, no, have, no. So you know, that's they, they, sometimes they just don't know that we we've done it in the future. No, I'm I'm just making a joke, but I um 
uh, the, we have had a couple of repeat suggestions and the reason we haven't used them is because they are repeat suggestions, not because we don't appreciate them. So thank you very much. But, uh, that's why we're once again, going to born too late's real playlist that he made us that has saved me a lot of work. Thank yeah, right? you. you just too pull late. from the pull from the list there. Yeah. 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 So that's why we keep doing the same one is because we haven't had any new wheel suggestion, uh, songs lately, uh, wheel songs lately, and we haven't gotten any that people have made. Make us a wheel song. Mm-hmm. Make us I've one. I've asked a few people. That's a lot of work, though. I can see it why no one wants to do it. Well, there's a there's an a, there's AI that will actually generate a song for you now. Yeah, I listen to a lot of AI songs. There's like yeah. uh, taking a shit at work on company time. That's a good. That song. is a good song. That actually, I like that one a lot. I played that for other people. Check that one out. Uh, this was definitely not AI generated. It's from Blind Guardian, Wheel of Time. Oh, Blind Guardian. That's some Dungeons and Dragonsy shit. That's awesome. That band's awesome. Metal guys. That song goes on for nine minutes. Hell yeah, it does, because it has to. (laughs) That fact means very different things to different people. I can't imagine the heights of epicness they must get to. I mean, it is... It's. I get why it's enjoyable. Great music for people who never are going to have sex. (laughs) All right. Uh, We could definitely spin to that. Look at that guitar solo in the background. Jesus God. They're just going for it. Blind (laughs) Guardian. Flying Guardian, check them out. All right, Terrible Guardian, next time. really. Hire, like, that was a bad hire. And it's gonna didn't be, ask us what our guesses be. were gonna be. Oh, I didn't. Oh, oh. Who cares? Who cares? Oh shit! Who cares? Oh, wow! Yay. 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 I've been waiting to do so this, this one. Land, this landed between two. I probably would rather have done Phase One Phasers and Young Love. We missed uh, both. No, no, I've been wanting to do this one. Well, it I'm is what it is. This. Although it's, Young Love would have been pretty good. I, I did. I did misspell it. I put a Mangus Robot Fighters. Yeah, Mangus. We'll call him Mangus. Yeah, from no, now I've on. been Mangus. calling it Mangus the whole yeah, time. Mangus, Mangus, Mangus Robot Dangus. Fighter issue number nine. Um, I really don't know why this is on there. Because it's an awesome title for a comic book. I put it's, that on there because says, the name Magnus Robot Fighter wow. is fucking awesome. We are staying in the same era. We're still in the 90s, 1992. Uh, and the note says Magnus Robot Fighter versus <laughs> versus Top Hat Robot. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a, uh, let's take a quick look at All right, movie marathon cover. about Top Hats. So, oh, every movie has to involve Top so Hats. This is from Valiant Comics. And uh, Magnus is definitely. T- what is got, the Top Hat robot? Oh so here, we're like, here we see like Magnus is like a muscle man who rips apart robots. He literally is a robot fighter. And his yes, girlfriend. Does his job. His girlfriend has an under boob shirt. This was the time when you had under boobs. <laughs> and there um, is a really comical robot in the center shaking his fist at. <laughs> Magnus Robot Fighter. I just I have to say real fast. There's a there's yeah. a podcast I listen to a Disney podcast called Adventure Zone, and one of the main characters in one of the arcs is named Magnus, and his main characteristic is that he goes around ripping robots' arms off. No, he's Magnus off. Robot. So I'm Fighter. really happy that on the cover of this uh, comic book is a man ripping robot arms off named Magnus. <laughs> That's the job oh, yeah. of the future. Robot fighting. That's the job because we're gonna have so much. AI and robots, like you're yep. gonna want a guy who can beat up robots. You can be a, a robot fighter, you can be a crypto miner, or you can be a prompt jockey. Those are I the imagine three jobs. the crypto miners will be that job will be taken by the robots. Oh shit. Well I guess yeah, your job will be to oversee the crypto mining robots. Yeah, but I mean like they can have a robot who oversees that robot. Oh shit. They thought of everything. All there is to do is to fight the robots. <laughs> you gotta fight them. Yeah, and this lady does I do want to call attention to her fashion, which I'm sure we'll talk more about in the episode. But yeah, she has the under boob, which was big at the time. Uh that shirt is not staying down. And she also is wearing the low rider pants that mm-hmm. we talked about earlier. So. There's a pin headed robot with a wearing a U two sticker on his <laughs> chest. <laughs> He's a big YouTube fan. Uh, One guy's uh, waiting for his turn to fight Magnus, and so his chest says versus. Wow. The other one back there is just L7. Yeah, like L7. the band? Yeah, like yeah. the band. I yeah, saw them like live. shit list. Oh, wow. Yeah, All man. right. Well, yeah. this should be fun. I guess I'm we'll talk about B, robots. I guess the B stands for the boss. That's why he's shaking his fist, and he has yeah. the most normal sized head. He's, he's, the, he's the angriest one. Well, why you? Robot right. fighter! We're going to be talking about robots and, and killer delts, because look at this guy. He is built. Jesus. I know, dude. 
I love, uh, I'm loving. I'm loving this already. I want to yeah. fight some robots personally. Right. I don't even like smartphones. I'm gonna go drop kick my toaster right now. Yeah, fuck that toaster. It's fuck not technically a shit. robot though. That's you don't have a toaster. Ah, uh, yes and me, Shay. Yes and me. You don't have a toaster. How do you make toast? Uh, do I have a toaster? No, I have a. I have an air fryer. If I want toast, I'll put it in the air All fryer. Right, James, air frying is bread. Yeah, why not? Why not? Here I'm out here fighting robots, and he's air frying his bread. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we've very cl- clearly picked our sides in this book. That's now you could have, if you if you thought you were of the people, you could have called it a toaster oven. But mm-hmm. yeah. I tell you, who I'm voting for Magnus Robot Fighter for yep. president. So he's, who who is, else are you gonna vote for? I'm voting Jim? for Magna Conte. <laughs> Magnus Robot. That fighter guy beats fighter. his wife. <laughs> he is a monster. Uh, I, I don't know. I put him on the ticket with. I'm assuming Magnus Robot Fighter is based on J.B. Pritzker. No, I think and, he's, no, he's based off of uh, uh, RFK Jr. with that muscular physique. <laughs> Can you believe how good. jacked he is? That's crazy. That RFK Jr. is just this muscle-bound man. I mean, you don't know how much to attribute to the worm. That's the enough worm, to make man. me vote for him. Yeah. The, his dedication yeah. to his physique. It's the dog diet and the worm in his brain. <laughs> right, dude. Dude, who'd have thought that was the key? <laughs> Fucking Here I am, fucking counting what a, calories. What a weird fucking guy! You got all the money in the world. You're a Kennedy. Just take her easy. Don't do. Dude, weird he shit. wants revenge. He wants revenge against the CIA <laughs> do, for killing his dad. Don't do anything weird. Just lay low and enjoy. No, it. What are you doing? Get, he's been weightlifting to fight the CIA <laughs> as president. Right, you know his what? Entire you're, selling, life. <laughs> you're selling me that he might be Magnus no, Robot fighter. I just want the celebrity boxing match between the CIA and oh, RFK right. Jr. Dude, he beats up George Jr. because he can't beat up George Sr. anymore. Anymore. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. He all right, just that's beats enough. his ass it's with his junior fucking. junior v junior. With his fucking turkey fists, just yeah. pummeling <laughs> George Junior. <laughs> all right. That's enough nonsense. That wasn't me. That's my dad. Ow. We're done. <laughs> We're, done. We're done. We're done. All right. Uh, yeah, Shay, give us some uh, closing plugs, please. All right. Uh, well. Listen and watch. <laughs> what the hell was that? She's still thinking about bus about RFK yeah, beating no, people up. Yeah, now it's move on. New segment. I did not keep my phone by me while we were doing while we were recording this episode, so I don't have my notes in front of me. So bear with me here Wait. while I do it from memory. That's why I said bear with me here. Uh, listen, watch, <laughs> find us on all of the things under Jesus. Dark Side's couch, and that is including uh, Twitter, Twitch, Discord, YouTube. Specs. Uh, the different podcast apps a- a- apps that you can think of and your abs. We're probably mm-hmm. in those abs. Uh-huh. Yeah, code your own podcast app and listen to us on that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, or, or visit darksidescouch.com. Yeah, mm-hmm. do all those things. All right, uh, that's it. Uh, mm-hmm. Any final join thoughts? Our, join our Discord. Yeah. And we've got a Discord. That's Yeah, thing join the Discord. Well. It's the only thing I check now. That's it. <laughs> so if you want like to all talk that other to stuff. Me, that's all how you do it. All bullshit. All right. Anybody, any final thoughts? Uh, I'm so excited for Magnus Robot Fighter and the, yeah, the RFK going. Jr. jokes I'm going to make because of it now. Magna Contest Robot Fighter. <laughs> Shay. <laughs> I mean, I was going to make a similar joke, but now yeah, I'm just gonna, you got it. Now I'm just going to hope that Blue Devil somehow shows up. Yeah, no Blue Devil. That's that for now, Cushion Crusaders. We'll talk to you next time on the couch. It is now my honor to introduce the President of the United States, George Bush. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order. It's RFK Jr. It's RFK Jr. He's got a steel chair. Don't do it. Don't do it, RFK Jr. 